Are you ready? Uh, clear, clear, clear. It's time for a live stream. You are privileged AF. It's important to remember that. It's okay to cry. And it's also common to experience deep belly laughs. Hi, I'm Kia. Why does this sound cold every second? If you like jokes about scams, spirituality, and toxic positivity, it's so quantum. This is actually legit. It's time to tune into the mango frequency. Wait, what? So let's dive right in. Got my celery juice right here. I am not <laughs> emotionally stable. <laughs> Hello, hello, welcome to the show. Mm -mm. Don't you love my background? Isn't it getting more and more decorated? No, it's actually exactly the same. However, I do have this on. I've changed the, the blur in the background. That's exciting, right? I did something since the last time we all met here, right? I got the fan out of the frame. You want to see something cool? Hold on. Look what I did. Okay, coming soon to a background near you. These are paper origami paper cranes. Little known fact about me, I've been making these since high school. Love them. And I have, I don't even know how many I have, but I have multiple colors. It's a rainbow of, of options, okay? So if you're wondering how much free time I have, <laughs> it's enough to make paper cranes. You can see the rest. There's a green strand and a black and white strand and a brown strand. So some may say, some may say I'm multi-talented. Some others may say, I have a condition in which I'm <laughs> constantly looking for activities. <laughs> and hey, if you have, I don't know if I have ADD or anything, TikTok would like me to believe so. Um, but if you have something where you f can't focus, which is kind of my issue a lot of the times, but I feel like it's just the society we live in at this point. But um, having something like, if I'm watching a show or listening to a Zoom call, folding origami while I'm doing it, it makes me focus so much better so much better. So I highly recommend, it's a very easy, um, once you learn how to do it, <laughs> if you're interested, once you learn how to fold, you can use any piece of paper really, as long as it's a square you can cut pieces of paper into squares and then fold. And then, Hey, you got something to do. You don't have to use a fidget spinner or a pokey ball, pokey thing that's made of plastic. You can make beautiful art. <laughs> Anyways, did I move? No, I just, well, I moved, yes, I moved from the living room into the guest room. <laughs> so that's the big, the big move from one room to the next. I used to be down there in this nook in the living room, um, but it was becoming hard because it, there's no light in that nook. Um, and it was uh, getting depressing because it was like dark at four o'clock, 4.30 now, five o'clock. And I was like, I need a window. So now I have a window to my right, um, over there. So thank you everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As per usual, um, let me make sure that our alerts are visible. Uh, and I'm going to turn on the other stream, the other chat, so I can see it. So we're back. Today's going to be a chill stream as if they're not all chill. <laughs> Am I right? I'm the chillest person. Am I the only chill person that you've ever met? Um, but we are going to dive back into um, the, the Twin Flames universe. Now I realize why I was getting caught up in the grammar last time because I was convinced it was Twin Flame, uni twin flame Universe, but then it's called Twin Flames Universe sometimes. So it's Twin Flame Ascension School. So they singularly put Twin Flame for the school aspect, but it's Twin Flames Universe. So I was sort of right and also sort of wrong in the last stream when I kept going back and forth. Um, so I figured we didn't get through everything and there's so much. And also last night, unrelated cult note i watched um mother god uh, love has one cult documentary on hbo Pfft. Pfft. 
few cups. If you like this type of content, if you like cults, you don't like cults, but if you like learning about cults, if you like learning about wacky people being indoctrinated, thanks, Alaska La Tundra. Thank you so much. If you like that stuff, you will love this documentary. And maybe we could talk a little bit about it because there's a guy I put on Instagram. This guy looks like Tony oh, Robbins. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like if Tony Robbins wasn't successful, like monetarily, economically, this oh, okay. is what he would end up probably going to, into a spirituality cult, uh, in my opinion. I'll show you real quick. And if anyone who's seen that documentary <laughs> oh, okay. will probably okay. agree with me um, that this, uh, he looks spot on. A uh, doppelganger. So let me give me see. Oh, okay. And this was a uh, father god uh, in the cult. There was mother god who ended up passing away and becoming a corpse in the um, oh, okay. cult. in the cult home. <laughs> yeah, this documentary is dark. I will say, uh, very dark. Um, and then so oh, okay. he was like the second cult. in charge, and he is like I said, a a uh, Tony Robbins lookalike. Let me sign into my Instagram. Hold on. Um, and then we'll also go into more about Jeff and Shalia, Jeffrey Christ and Shalia, and uh, kind of uncover more about what they're all up to in the Twin Flames universe. Um, so give me one second. And thank you to Notorious Ashley. Thank you so much, Notorious Ashley. Notorious Ashley says, number one. <laughs> Number one, 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 and two balloons for that. Ashley, notorious, notorious A-S-H, Ash. Uh, I say this. Get off your butt. Okay, this is your motivation for the day, okay? I like winning more than I like sitting on the beach. Okay, and also? Her charisma is straight up off the charts. That's for you. Because you are notorious, Ashley. Amen, sister. Okay. Uh, Allison, welcome. Thank you for joining the membership. Notorious Ashley, thank you for joining the membership. Limbo Dumbo. <laughs> That's my nickname in high school. Limbo Dumbo. I'm just kidding. <laughs> thank you for joining the live stream. Thank you. Thank you. And also, Alaska Blood Tundra, again, shout out for those gifted memberships. Thank you so much. She's savage. She's savage. We love it. And also... I have dyslexia so bad. Same. Uh, thank you. Okay. So, yeah. So, let me just get through this one. So, again, this is from the uh, HBO documentary, The uh, Love Has One Cult. Oh, yeah. Let's just go through my Instagram stories. This will be... I'll, this is me slowly turning into a... Oh, there I am. Into a uh, self-serving Instagram ad. Um, okay, this I was at the mall yesterday. I bought something on Black Friday uh, from okay. Abercrombie. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, accosted by this poster in the Gap store. Our good friend, <laughs> Jay Shetty, and his twin, I mean, sorry, and his wife, um, Ravi. Ravi? Roddy, sorry, Roddy. And uh, yeah, they are modeling at the Gap now. So there you go. They do not turn down a ad campaign. Uh, there's a little tarot in my paper crane pile as I'm stringing them up. Very cute. We love her. Okay, meme. Okay, here he is. The, the resemblance is uncanny. <laughs> Am I wrong? So if you do watch this documentary, this is Father God. He is quite the character and maybe we'll talk about him uh maybe another stream a dedicated stream to that documentary because it's crazy but i just couldn't i couldn't help myself that this was like twins <laughs> twins basil twins separated at birth perhaps i don't know probably probably I maybe mean, that's tony robbins secret half brother or something that would make sense um, okay, anyway, so let's recap on what the hell, if you didn't see the last live stream, you'd be like, what is a twin flame? Who are the twin flames? Blah, blah, blah. So quick, quick, quick recap. So Twin Flames Universe is an online cult, I will say, um, but it's also an online okay, business. Cult. Oh, thank you. Hold on. Before we get into it, let me make sure that I'm not missing any messages. <sighs> 
Atelier Sarah, thank you, welcome. And Caitlin Amanda posted four tarot emojis. Tarot, she's coming, she'll be back. She jumped on my desk during the work day like six times today, so I'm sure she'll be here. She's coming. And thank you to Michelle Sauter. Michelle Sauter, thank you so much. Michelle Sauter says, you are amazing. Dang, thank you. For that I say. They're gonna be dropping some really powerful, amazing, life-changing shiz. And also, this is me. I am not emotionally stable. Fun fact about my life right now, I am back on Zoloft, everybody. <laughs> I am back on Zoloft. As I complained the last two streams about my uh, depression, uh, I, I'm working on it and I'm figuring it out and I'm getting through it. And part of that process is getting back on medication. And I was off of it for a couple years and now I'm back on and I feel better already. <laughs> so this may be a reminder to get back on your medication. It's okay to cry. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, thank you so much to Michelle. Um, all right. So here we go. So we're going back to the website to catch everybody up. Oh, that's me. Narcissist. Okay. Um, so this is the Twin Flames universe with Jeff and Shalia. And basically it's a business. It's a, all these cults are also businesses to some degree, just so you know. Um, and what they do is you join, you pay a certain amount. There's courses, there's groups, there's a school that you can do. You can become a coach. There's lots of different pathways to get involved with this group. But what they're promising is that they will, they have ordained information from the universe, God, whatever. Um, and they know who you are destined to be with. So it's like a soulmate, but even more intense. So twin flames according to them, mean that you are traveling through all these lifetimes together. The whole point of life is to find your twin flame. And then if you find that person, so you're like a piece of a puzzle, right? And the other person is the perfect match or you're a key and the other person's the, okay. the lock, you know? And then once you combine, it's like the perfect, you know, thing. And then you ascend to heaven or something. I don't know. I don't really get the ascension part. They just say like you are sent. And what they will promise you if you pay them to join this group, that they'll tell you who your twin flame is. And oh my gosh, just so happens. Um, it's someone else who's joined this group and paid money to be there. Now, Gender is kind of a weird thing with this group because they'll match two women together and then they'll say to one of the women, you are actually supposed to be a man, so you should transition, you should use different pronouns, you should start identifying with your masculine. And then there's men in the group that they say, you should be a woman and we got, God told us that you were a woman and you should change your outfits and you know, same thing. So there's been lots of debate about whether that's, you know, LGBTQ plus friendly or if it's actually just, you know, getting the traditional man and woman mindset with like a spiritual twist, but it really is just like traditional gender roles all over again. Um, and we talked about that a little bit last week, but the documentaries, both of them, the Amazon and the Netflix one kind of go way more into detail and they have experts and things. So I wanna focus on sort of the business side of things still, kind of their crazy claims. And Jeff <laughs> Jeff also believes he's the second coming of Christ. Um, so, you know, I, to me, that part seems like either drugs or mental, like, like a manic episode is what that seemed like. Because um, Jeff has, you know, gone on these tangents where he's just like, I am the second coming and it just doesn't make sense. So we watched a little bit of that. Maybe we'll, we'll kind of dive into that part of the story as well. Um, but just so we know, so oh, also, also, so I told you how they do these readings, right? So they'll tell you, like, if I was to join, they'll say, um, you know, Kayla, your twin flame is tarot. Okay. So you're going to have to get into harmonious union with tarot. And that means that I would marry tarot okay tarot's my cat but let's pretend tarot is a person i would marry tarot and then we'd have a ceremony and then we'd have to keep coming to classes to learn how to ascend because now we found each other i guess um but what i was gonna say about that uh it was something about that and i was gonna say something oh oh okay so you know how that's like an example they've also channeled Jeff and Shalia has have channeled celebrity couples. 
including like who Justin Bieber's twin flame is, who like, well, Billie Eilish also, who her twin flame is. And uh, I think that it's funny. It's very funny who they picked for uh, who are actually twin flames with each other. So uh, I thought that'd be kind of fun to, to look at those. So again, so this is their website. Uh, this is Shalia. Okay. Um, and this is what she says about uh, why you're here. I was just like you. I, okay. I know you. Hold on. Let me get the music on. I know you. I was just like you. I desired twin flame love. I remember what it was like feeling incomplete without my man. My life felt like it was on hold waiting for him when everything I did was just to find him and be with him. I felt lonely, lost. I ached for completion, struggled to keep the light of hope alive in my heart. But I decided to keep going because I knew that there was something deeper in my heart that was calling me. I decided to answer the call of love. This love has changed me fundamentally on a deep so wait, on a level so deep it's transcendental. It's a real very real experience of life, a life lived in love, in harmonious union with my twin flame. I don't look at the stars longing for someone to share them with anymore because I am complete in my love with him, my perfect person. Now I dedicate my life to helping others achieve what I have achieved. And you know what? It's working really well, in fact. <laughs> sounds so bitchy. That sounds like someone who's like telling someone who didn't approve of their relationship. And you know what? It's working really well, in fact. Okay, we, we trust you. We believe you. Totally. Sounds, sounds legit. And I'm not the only one anymore who has this love. You can have your love be like this too. I, suff I used to suffer from separation, but now all my pain has been resolved. I perfectly attracted the love of my life, and now I have my perfect and right person. I've experienced enough contrast to unequivocally know I am with the right person. Okay, it's so boring. Ugh. So that's her harmonious flame. They met on Facebook through a friend. And then they got together. At the time, she was living in Sedona, Arizona, and she was at a, as a hairstylist or working at a hair salon. And she was working with one of these, you know, life coaches in Sedona, these energy healers. Okay. Um, so she was doing that. Jeff was out in um, Hawaii working on an Airbnb. I don't know if he owned it or if he was working there in some capacity uh, on a vegetarian Hawaiian Airbnb. And then the mutual friend connected them via Facebook. And then all of a sudden Jeff was coming to Arizona to be with her. They met and then I guess they hit it off and the rest is history. Now humanity has been restored for us. Um, so let's, uh, so here's some more examples. So this is the ultimate twin flames. Okay. As you know, um, but there's all other ones. These are all the proof. Uh, I don't even know that name. Lorian Chu and Alexandra. So not as many as you'd think that have made it to the website. <laughs> I would expect a lot more for how many people have joined, um, through the years but here's some successes okay so they got some people still you know i don't know if they're still uh on board or if they're just on the website but there you go and then this is the coaching so you have to you're supposed to get the coaching so that you can um you know find your twin flame a little bit easier now these people are trained to teach the twin flames courses or like the, the indoctrination like for you so that Jeff and Shalia don't have to do it all themselves. So they all, so to, uh, to become certified, you have to buy all of the stuff that Jeff and Shalia have created. So these people are in the hole, like at least 10 grand basically, or more is what they're saying at the very least. Um, and then you can hire them to teach you how to find your twin flame, even though Jeff and Shalia will just tell you who it is. I don't know. I don't get this whole thing. <laughs> And then there's different levels. This is master. So this is the highest level. Okay. Then you go down there. We only have ladies and one, I don't know, a couple of dudes who are the secondary tier and that's it. So there's two tiers. So and I guess you click on one and then you can get, let's see how much. So this is like, a, this is a separate person's business, but they're certified through 
the Twin Flames universe. Um, so there you go. People wrapped up in this whole thing. All right, let's go to, oh, gosh, no. Let's go to this video. Uh, we didn't get to watch this one. So this is, so last stream, we read the whole Vanity Fair article about um, sort of the people who are claiming that they were mistreated by Jeff and Shalia. It kind of broke down some of the um, quirks of the organization. And the reporter, if you remember, was the one that was in the interview um, with Jeff. Let me see, hold on, let me move this over. Oh, okay. Um, Jeff did that weird like interview with the reporter and he kept asking her like are, are twin flames real and she's like I don't know you tell me and it was very uncomfortable um, and she had the red hair uh, hold on I'll show you that clip so you can see what I'm talking about so you see what I'm talking about about hold on can i spell hold on hold on uh, 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 uh. i guess it was on the other one cuts in your life and spiritual journey it was on strawberry shortcake sorry buddy we're going we're getting it. We're doing it. We're loving it. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is the reporter. So they invited her to the, their home. Um, she stayed with them for a couple days. I don't know if she slept there, but she was at their place for like two days, interviewed them both a ton, spent a lot of time there. And then Jeff did this like really wacky interview. It was very uncomfortable. So she writes the article. We read that last time. And now this is their response to that article. So they're going to go through it point by point to uh, refute the charges that have been not filed, but publicly you know, stated in the media. Uh, and welcome to Brittany. Thank you for joining the membership. Thank you so much. For that, I say... Buzzing with joy. <laughs> and that's it. Okay, cool. I'm all caught up. All right, here we go. So this is cult leader Jeff and Shalia trying to do damage control after the Vanity Air article. It has been, um, and it's pretty short. It's only five minutes. And let me know how it sounds because their audio is horrible. <laughs> they have a terrible audio system. Okay, here you go. Hi, I'm Jeff. Hey, everyone. I'm Shalia. And we're coming to you today for a brief video to make you aware of a response that we have created, and that's going to be in the link below, uh, to a growing controversy uh, about us on the internet. And this controversy has been um, very painful for us, very uh, damaging. We're a throuple now. I feel like there's too much space in between them for them to be twin flames. They would have burnt out by now. They would have, they would have been blown out. Their candles are dimming because they're so far away from each other. ...to us emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, uh, financially, and reputationally. And this, uh, this controversy is actually a conspiracy created by our haters and <laughs> blown up in the mass media mm. to shut us down. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to uh, say too many details about it because we've written everything in the article and want to direct you to it. But uh, this is our way of saying um, enough is enough. It's our way of responding, of standing up for ourselves, of standing up for religious and spiritual rights and your right and our right to uh, pursue uh, our religious fulfillment to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a right that we have in the United States and that we believe that everyone should have all around the world mm -hmm. to uh, love and worship their God as they see fit. And uh, we do it through twin flames and by uh, using twin flames as an ascension journey to God and mm -hmm. understanding the fundamental reason that uh, you're called by your twin flame and these people conspiring are trying to stop put a stop to us 
This is very, giving me medical medium vibes. Like, oh, it's just the haters are out to get us. It's all a, it's a cabal of, you know, former followers turned, you know, psychos. And they're just here to shut me down because they don't want the world to heal. It's like, shut up. There's, there's something I call bullshitting yourself. Right? This is them. It hurts. It stings. It's like someone wrote an article about you. I mean, as I am like upset about an article possibly coming out making me look horrible. <laughs> but I also feel like, you know, I'm not going to refute it and go, it's not true. I just feel like it might be misconstrued. But <sighs> getting negative attention is definitely hard. Uh, so I get that like people that freak out and like just you know go ah we need to speak out and just go point by point and point out the, the all the lies but in in reality like at with every grain of you know misunderstanding there's usually a little truth to it or the overall idea is probably true um especially in such an in-depth article that this reporter did on them <laughs> but hey let's give them the benefit of the doubt maybe maybe we're wrong maybe they're gonna break, break it down point by point and t prove us wrong uh asari shepherd thank you so much asari shepherd says life liberty and the right to grift dude no <laughs> yeah life liberty and the pursuit of scamming and i guess it's scamming i mean what they're promising is like just insane like it's not you know if you were thinking clearly and conscious consciously you would know that ran two random people on the internet cannot predict and tell you who you're meant to be with that is such a personal and you know person yeah personal decision for you in your life and it would of course be easier for someone to tell you who your true love is and you wouldn't have to worry about dating or you know, being rejected or feeling lonely in the meantime, like that would, yeah, that would be wonderful. But that is unfortunately not the life we live in, uh, not the reality that befalls me at least. So yeah, uh, I don't know if it's so much a scam as it is just, you know, taking advantage of people who are vulnerable and just are looking for love and are looking for an easy way out, I guess, or easy way in, I guess. It's not fine. Oops. And for that, I say, I don't know anything more cultish than that. There you go. All right. Back to it. Thank you. Sorry. Bringing our twin flame work to the world for various insane and sick reasons. Yeah. I think if you're watching this video, I think it's really important that you make yourself aware that this is happening within the twin flame world, the twin flame niche that um, people niche. who teach uh twin flames and twin flame union harmonious twin flame union are being targeted and um i think it's important for you to educate yourself on what's happening the conspiracy happening because uh what twin flames are and have is a very beautiful gift to give to the world and quite frankly there's an evil that is trying to suppress it and kill it and uh, we have been the victims of that um, it's actually pretty insane. The last year, a year and a half in our life has been very insane dealing with this, like even physically people coming to our door. So I really invite you to please read our article, our response to the article, um, articles, but you know, more recently the Vanity Fair article. Um, and you know, like, please support us if you can, like it has not been easy for us. And uh, we're being truly victimized and a lot of the things that we have said are being completely taken out of context and that means our words and the meaning is quite twisted and cruel uh, in its interpretation. So um, This isn't the type of content that we want to bring you. We really want to just do Twin Flames we on We want to this talk about channel. spirituality. We want to share the, the joy and gift. We also want to make content about our million dollar business and show you our mansion and our cars and our garage. That's the stuff you're here for, not to show that we've done wrong, potentially. ...of our work the world, but we've been uh, pulled into this nonsensical controversy and this is our way of responding and saying enough is enough and we would very much like to put an end to it 
mm -hmm. and uh, continue on sharing this beautiful work with the world. We have had a lot of ideas for Twin Flame videos for you guys, for YouTube. And a lot of our creative energy and spiritual energy has been tied up in this nonsensical article about us this last They've said nothing, like what part of it's nonsensical, what part of it's wrong. I hate when they just go, it's it's just our haters are doing it to get back at us because we're so loving and caring. It's like, they're just jealous. Why? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, tell me, okay, which part's wrong? Which part did they, you know, did they lie to you? Did the reporters, you know, mislead you in some way? Like, I, yeah, I, I don't like when they're just so vague. Uh, Julie, thank you so much, Julie. Julie says, more it. More, hold on, more it, Jeff, why am I, why am I trying to shut me down? <laughs> Truly. <laughs> okay, sometimes when I read these comments, I'm like, five minutes later, I'm like, oh, I get it. Okay, I'm going to try again. More it, Jeff, why am I trying to shut me down? I don't know. Please clarify what you mean here. <laughs> okay. It reminds me of something from the war. This is reminding me of something from the war because I can't read also. I still have dyslexia. Am I reading that wrong? Tell me how to read it. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Mirror it, mirror it. Okay, okay, hold on. Let me go back. Mirror it, Jeff. Why am I trying to shut me down? Okay, thank you. Okay, we got through that. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate the help. Uh, okay, so basically a, a big tenant of... Sorry, we got through it. Thank you. A big tenant of the um, Twin Flames, you know, uh, method here is to do the mirroring exercise. So if you're upset with somebody because they've, you know stabbed you in the heart you gotta look at yourself and go why am i stabbing myself in the heart and you're like you're not stabbing yourself you're being you know stabbed by a, a, a random burglar and you go why am i burglarizing randomly oh, okay yeah cool. that's how it works um good point it's very similar to teal swans got a, a uh, also a similar thing where it's like you go and you regress in your dreams and they tell you what you're past is there's a thing there and then also obviously like a scientology has got the um audits where you hold the metal cans in your hand and talk about your problems so they all have a version of this by the way mirroring they also have a thing called map which is like mind alignment protocol or something like that um so they got them they got all the tricks all the psychological tricks here so yeah good point julie thank you and Rebecca J. Kelly author, thank you so much. Rebecca J. Kelly author says, I missed your last live on this, but so happy I can make it to this one. Here's 19 stinking American dollars. Thanks for what you do. It's important to keep shedding light on these dangerous cult leaders. Well, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. It's fun for me. This is a fun time. And I, for that, I say, I do number two. True. We all do. Am I right? Am I right? You're not freaking fine. That's true. Also, if I were to die, it would probably be choking on broccoli. That's just for everyone to know. And also, you're exchanging biofluids. That's what the twins, that's what twin planes do. They exchange bodily fluids, I would imagine. Thank you, Rebecca J. Kelly. I appreciate that. And I am just going back to the, geez, <laughs> you're blowing up, girl. Um, going back to the article that I was talking about myself. So just a quick recap of what's going on there. Um, I got interviewed for an article that's coming out about, mostly about Dave Hollis, I believe, is going to be the prime, as the most part of the article. I don't know if I'm going to be a tiny part of this or a bigger part of it. At first, when I did the interview and they contacted me, I thought I was going to just be like a little tiny part. Um, but there's been a couple of things that have happened that I, like in the background, that make me think that it's okay. going to be more Thanks. of a focus on my role in like on YouTube and things. So we'll have to see, maybe I'm making a bigger deal about it than it is, but, um, yeah, I'm just, uh, once the article comes out, we'll do a whole stream about it. I'll show some DMS and things that have come out to, to me, um, that I wasn't going to share, but now I feel like I should to like explain myself a little bit better and then go through the article and we'll talk all about it. But for now, 
I'm going to bench it because, you know, I don't know what it's going to say. I'm just um, hypothesizing a little bit. So thank you so much to Rebecca J. Kelly, author. And uh, yeah, did I miss one? Sorry. Uh-huh. Let me do a refresh All about it. But for now, oops, I'm going to. I'm hearing myself. And Shannon Plimmer, thank you for joining the membership. Thank you, thank you. Okay, back to the other ones. Year because uh, we were told that it was going to be about Twin Flames and Twin Flames universe. So uh, our full attention and focus uh, has been about bringing has this been year. about bringing Twin Flames out to the mass media. You know, but it ended up being bringing controversy out to the mass media, and that's not what we supported. So yeah, and thank you uh, very much for checking out this video, and uh, we hope that you read the article uh, in full that we've linked below, and please yes. share with us your thoughts uh, on the article, whether it's in this comment section or preferably yeah. on the article's comment and, section. And um, so. if you feel even further called, please share our blog response. On your own social media. On your own social media. And like, share your thoughts about and it. And share your thoughts about it because, mm -hmm. like, this is really scary what's happening to us. And it can happen to you, too. And it's not okay. It's not okay. So, thanks so much. Thank you. What can happen? <laughs> you can invite a reporter to your house and then she'd write an article about you? Like, I, I guess, yeah, that's true, but... They could have said no. They could have said no to the exposure, but they wanted the exposure. So it's sort of the risk you take, I suppose. That's how I feel about myself too. It's like, I could have said no, I don't want to be featured in this, but I was like, yeah, it's cool. Why not? Um, okay, so let's go. Uh, I don't know if they actually did link it because this is a, okay, here he goes. Here's the response. <laughs> okay, response to Vanity Fair article vice correspondent alice hines is a liar okay remember her we, we she uh was talking in the last uh stream um okay so i guess this means that because she took this photo she's <laughs> hater uh okay so this video is unavailable don't know what this was we can never know um and here's a comment it says a longtime hater and former life purpose class subscriber reveals his admission of conspiracy um it says it was me who convinced alice via email oh, to write okay. a piece about welcome jail be nerdy thank you okay give me one second let me finish this line it was me who convinced alice via email to write a piece about the twin flames universe i also got her to reach out to katie and ann and katrina etc it was hilarious for me to see how excited you all were when she reached out to you guys not knowing what she was really up to i never thought you guys were that stupid and gullible to believe that vanity fair is interested in promoting your silly little group you guys are also very welcome cheers p.s lovely video of alice and jeff both pity it's taken down now so similar to Medical Medium and his Vanity Fair article, um, because someone tipped off the reporter, they are convinced that that means that it's all biased and there's no um, redeeming qualities of the article and therefore, you know, we should all just ignore it and keep buying the products. Uh, and JLB Nerdy, thank you so much, JLB Nerdy. JLB Nerdy says, uh, have these people taught you nothing about trusting writers, your article? <laughs> I think it's going to be fine. I think I'm just making it more than it is probably. That's what I'm going to uh, imagine. And the, 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 the part that's really the concerning part, and I started to keep alluding to it and not like telling you all, but I, again, like I just want to wait a little bit. Um, it's the it's the DM part that like is shocking me. And I think people will think, will understand when I like show it. And that's what I'm like freaking out about more so. Um, so for that, I say, are you freaking bonker pants? Yes. <laughs> yes. JLB nerdy. We are all bonker pants here. <laughs> thank you. And James T. Schulfer. Thank you so much. James T. Schulfer says for the love of God, if you are even slightly suspected of cult activity, do not wear a shirt that says anything close to heaven on earth. <laughs> Well, at that time, I think they thought this was going to be a puff piece and that they were like, these people are, you know, so amazing and they're just helping modern day couples find true love. And then they read the article and it was like, oh, this is a cult, maybe. And they were disappointed, which, hey, 
Oh, okay. That Close. happens. That happens sometimes. And for that, I say... You have to think instead of sitting around eating Skittles and watching Oprah reruns. <laughs> there you go. That's all I have to say, James. Thank you so much. Okay. <clears throat> so here's their response to the article. First, thank you for taking the time to read our actual story here. We categorically and emphatically disagree with the article written by Alice Hines and Vanity Fair's Holiday 2020 issue. Alice Hines completely misrepresented herself and her true intentions, which were to misconstrue and devalue the beauty and grace of a spiritual community that is beyond her self-decidedly shallow depth of comprehension. We are deeply saddened and shocked by the content of the article written by Alice Hines and the conclusions she chose to arrive at. We feel incredibly violated by our experience of working closely with her for nearly a year and vehemently disagree with her article. Alice Hines is not an undercover investigative journalist. She is a predatory writer who went on a crusade to harass and further burden our peaceful spiritual community in order to garner attention for her career in Vanity Fair. Okay, I don't think so. She never claimed to be an undercover investigative journalist because she asked you for an interview and you said yes. So there is no validity to that predatory writer who went on a crusade to harass and further burden. I mean, I would doubt that that's true. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't there, but asking questions and being honest about you're going to write an article for Vanity Fair is not, in my opinion, harassment or a crusade. Uh, if it was a positive, if she, if she, if the article came out and it was fully positive and she did exactly the same actions that she did before, they would be like, oh, she's the best. She's amazing. So, uh, no, I don't agree with this. She's not interested in uncovering the truth, but rather hovering just close enough to it so she can manipulate it to her whims and get away with it. She doesn't respect the moral responsibility of a journalist, nor does she respect its code of ethics. She doesn't see people as humans, but rather as subjects to be socially experimented upon for her reputational gain. <laughs> um, okay. I need some sources. I need some back, like some, some, um, proof of this, please. She is cold and hateful. Okay. Now we're getting like, you know, very not bullying, but like very, um, personal, emotional. There's no facts here. She's cold and hateful and arrogantly viewed us as an easy target because we were already being illegally victimized by multi-million billion dollar vice media. Now this article in Vanity Fair perpetuates deeper harassment of our community as stated in this link. What does this link go to? When journalism is causing unintentional harm. <laughs> okay. All right. It's a little light on the uh, facts again. Alice Hines has an education from Brown University in comparative literature. Instead of upholding the moral and ethical responsibilities she is beholden to as a journalist, she acted like a fiction writer who lacks the creativity to develop characters and stories of her own. So she instead engaged with us as dehumanized subjects who she used to develop this article. Okay. We said this already. She treated us as if she was using us to create make-believe characters for a story who she didn't actually care about or have a connection with. Okay, what are you saying? You cannot intimately know and tell someone's story without actually getting to know them. Okay, well, she spent a couple days with you. What do you expect her to like move in with you forever? I don't get it. Alex Hines kept a distance so she could manipulate our characters and smear us for attention, keeping our attention on herself was why Alice Hines took a year to write such a poorly crafted piece of meaningless drivel that could have been plopped out within a couple afternoons of work. <laughs> Self-proclaimed cult expert Sarah Burnman from Vice Media had already done much of the work for Alice in her two defamatory articles about us. The article in Vanity Fair barely does more than slightly expand upon expand the already established completely fabricated story based upon lies deliberately concocted by Katie and her hate group of hate group to defame us. So, okay. I guess they're mad. <laughs> it sounds like they're upset. <laughs> 
Alice Hines originally found out about us on a cult thread maliciously cultivated by Katie and her hate group on Reddit, which is an unchallenged forum where anyone can say anything they want about anyone. Okay, so what happened to freedom of speech? What happened to freedom of, of worshiping whoever you want and that being a tenant of America that you so much believe in and pursuing happiness? I love how people say that when it's about them and then they go, but Reddit needs to be shut down. It's like, you can't have only positive speech like that is not that is not a fair and balanced society if you just restrict everyone from saying anything negative towards you and people just misconstrue what defamatory is like all the time what libel is what slander is like it's a the bar is so high for that like someone can say you are like the most hideous ugliest disgustingest brokest fattest whatever they could ever say to embarrass you you have you know flames coming out of your nose and your whatever like doesn't matter you have a right to say that like can you be fired from your job sure you don't they don't have a right to keep your you know like popularity for saying things but like legally governmentally there's very little that anyone can do to stop you from saying something now if you're lying or saying something about like criminal about this person you know that's fake that's different but these people always claim like, oh, I'm going to sue you. It's like, no, you're not. You might threaten to, you might send a cease and desist, but that is not a lawsuit. So everyone stand strong. <laughs> you have rights to say things. Uh, MB, MB, thank you so much. MB says, bit of projection going on here, methinks. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, MB. I think that sounds exactly right. And for that, I say, call the police, call the psych ward. Silly, dumb, incapable. That's how I feel while reading this article or blog post, whatever this is. Thank you, MB. Um, okay, so Reddit is horrible, as they say. Uh, whenever we would challenge allegations made about us on Reddit, they were deleted, oh, okay. so our voice would not be heard and the cult shaming and abusive conspiracy could continue. That's when Alice Hines decided to prey on us. She came to us under false pretenses and presented herself as a helpful professional who would get to the truth of the matter and present a peaceful solution to the public. Huh? <laughs> Is this a conflict or like what? I, I'm not understanding. Present a peaceful solution. A peaceful solution to what? The war of your company? Like, I don't get it. Like a journalist would present as a professional, yes, would get to the truth of the matter. Okay, I don't, I'm, I'm un, uh, what did she do instead? We welcome the opportunity to have a deep investigation into our characters, our lives, and our thought system, which has been under vicious attack by Katie since it was revealed to be highly effective at miraculously bringing twin flames together into harmonious union. Our spiritual community has developed our work into a functioning religion. Okay, we should also talk about this, that this is also a religion now. The Church of Union, I believe is what it's called. And let's click on that. Yeah, Church of Union, unionism. So they not only have a, uh, they not only have a business cult, they have a church now as well, but only 644 followers. So lame. <laughs> Lame. What do you have to say, Rachel? Lame. I don't know if anybody has worked as hard on this topic as I have. Thank you. Uh, okay, back to it. Uh, people are experiencing countless miracles in their lives as a result of their adherence to it. It is a vetted system of thinking that is revolutionary, produces astounding positive results, and draws its roots from the fundamentals of all religions. This is why it draws support from all different kinds of people, from all different kinds of cultural, religious, and economic backgrounds. It's universal, and it works every single time for every single person who honestly applies its principles and practices. This is because it's based in fundamental reality not a fictitious version of reality. Alice Hines did not investigate us in order to find the truth. Alice Hines spent a year prying into our lives to violate us, frame us, validate her already formed judgments about us, and expand a non-newsworthy story and frame designed to further harass and bully us and exact harmful negative consequences on our life and business in order to advance her career by getting more attention for herself. <sighs> okay... Alice Hines presented herself as an independent critical thinker, an unbiased third party who would bring injustice to a situation. Okay, wait. 
She presented herself as an independent critical thinker. Okay. And unbiased, I think that means un or an, an unbiased third party who would bring justice. Oh, okay. I don't Holes. think journalists are often saying that they're going to bring justice to their articles. <laughs> That would be uh, that would be a breach of ethical, you know, uh, ethics. But um, I don't I doubt that that she what was she bringing justice to them because of what people saying that they scammed them to a situation which was clearly unjust hatred against our community. Yeah, so clearly it was clearly unjust hatred that people didn't like that we were telling them what to do and taking their money. She and her editorial team used every trick in the tabloid book to manipulate the reader into believing that she, what she thinks about us, including darkening our photos with heavy contrasting shadows to make us look sinister, but she didn't use honesty and she didn't follow the basic tenets of journalism. Now I do agree the heavy contrast shadowing on their photos. That is true. (laughs) I think that did occur because the photos that they use were kind of like eerie and like mysterious but I guess it was supposed to be like mysterious you know these cult leaders and they put this like sharp light behind them but if you were at the photo shoot you kind of would know that and I don't know that one I will give them that that's something that happened in I think Time Magazine with OJ Simpson that's been debated in journalism for a long time like they darkened his photo his mugshot on the front cover and a lot of people were like okay you know that's not the the actual coloring of the photo you manipulated it and put it out there to make it seem like he was guilty and um, I don't know if that came out before or after his trial, but that's something that I talked about in college a lot is that photo and the ethics of, you know, even changing the, the darkness or the sharpness of th- something to evoke an emotion journalistically is definitely gray area at the best and just flat out wrong at the worst. So I would have taken that thread a little farther if I was them here, but I don't know. I think they're going to go back into she's a hateful person. Um, conspiracy of everything. Okay. Conspiracy of everything. Uh, wait, uh, <laughs> I love your, uh, one, 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 one. Thank you so much. Wait, if Jeff and Shalia are not happy with how the media is portraying them, why aren't they doing the mirroring exercise? There's the main issue right there. Boom. Yeah, exactly. They don't practice what they preach. Are we shocked? Are we absolutely shocked about this? That, that cult leaders don't take their own advice? No. Are we shocked that self-help leaders and every guru that we've ever discussed on this channel never takes their own advice? No. Um, where's Colleen? There's Colleen. I have all the answers, folks. Thank you, conspiracy of everything. Good, good point. Yeah. Uh, if they applied their own teachings, they wouldn't think twice about this and they would just let it go like a thought in the wind. They'd go on and on. So this is goes on for quite a while, but they're saying, you know, that she apparently is some sort of horrible person, even though they seemed like they're having fun and being friendly previously. Um, here's all the fake evidence that they're claiming that Katie had left um, cause there's like an anti group for, we can look at this. There's like a meme page, um, for people who used to be in the, in the cult or in the group. Um, so there's just a lot of like, there's a lot to go through, but they're just basically saying, you know, that she was wrong and the article is bad and Yeah. So that's a lot to go through. Um, but let's go back to hearing some videos. I like hearing from them. They are the most exciting. So, I mean, if you have time, I would say, um, you know, read this article. I don't want to spend the whole time reading it because it'll take away from, <laughs> from everything else. But here is, uh, this is what their true story is. They are, we are miraculously bringing together twin flame unions. They are. They are healing psychological traumas. They're they're doing that and they're changing the world for the better. So there you go. That's the truth according to them. Uh, Where's the proof? Just trust us. Trust us, bro. We're trustworthy. Um, Okay, hold on. Let me open it. Once in a while, we can be together sometimes okay um 
here we go. We're going to pick some, some goodies out. Let's see. Can we look at our, at the popular ones? This looks interesting. The real life fairy tale of twin flames. They're wearing crowns in the thumbnail, but <laughs> the views are low, so it can't be that good. Um, okay. Let me pick out a good one. So there's a lot of stuff of couples. Okay. Let's look at this one. What, what twin flames ascension school students know that you don't yet. Okay. That's just a sales. I am Jeff. I'm she definitely went through like a little goth face. Shalia at one point. Okay, I'm looking for a specific video. Where is it? We got a lot of twin flame couples talking about their life, talking about their their legacies. Maybe we will. Maybe we will have to. Um, and also, just so you know, um, there's a whole subplot to this about their child. So they have one baby um, that was born, and oh gosh, and. Um, they believe that this is like part of their, not a thruple, but it's like they're, they're tri some people aren't just twin flames. They have triplet flames and they are twin flames together and their child is the third flame. I don't know. It seems very creepy to me given what they, you know, claim is what your twin flame is supposed to be like. Um, okay, what is this? Jeff makes his twin flame cry. Okay, let's take this. This is a live stream talk show. Um, this is from 2021. Here we go. This is like the live, the real deal stuff. Here we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the very last, very special twin flames live talk show. And this is only, this is like rage talk for twin flames. Um, and this has only been viewed 488 times. So in my opinion, hot piping tea. I'm going to smash your phone. There you go. Here we go. Yeah, here How's we the volume? We are. Here we are. I'm your host, Jeff. And here is my lovely wife and twin flame, Shalia. Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Oh, Oops. oh I'm so happy that you decided to come. Yeah, I had to come. <laughs> I'm usually always watching live mm -hmm. and like, you know, in the comments and chatting with people and, you Putting know, myself back in the shelf. And stuff. But I thought, uh, maybe I'll just slide into this one and, mm -hmm. you know, say hi. And, well, so yeah. glad to have you. It's uh, almost like the old Tea Fast days. Sort of, except for YouTube slash like live and our Facebook group. It's so awesome. Well, it's nice because in this live, uh, the very last talk show, we're going to spend the whole time uh, answering your questions. So I know some of you already know and you can already get going. I've got my laptop over here in order to read the questions off. So uh, feel free to get started on asking your questions. Yeah. It's like a TFAST class, only everyone is invited. And this is just so special. It's so near and dear to our hearts. If you don't know, TFAS stands for a TFAS, a Twin Flame Ascension School. It is the legendary uh, school which teaches you not only how to have harmonious union. Turn it up. Okay, let's see. I'm going to use that volume thing. Better? With your true Twin Flame, which it, it's been immensely mm -hmm. successful. Like that, but it teaches you how to live a more peaceful and harmonious life. I get everything Better? that you want. And the replay value is huge. Huge. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. co Ascension coaches, certified Ascension coaches, who've watched all 450 hours of Twin Flame Ascension School, the all classes pass all the way through already, and they're going for their next lap. And over mm -hmm. the years, I'm sure they'll get many, many laps. It's just such a valuable opportunity. Yeah. Highly recommend you check it out. If you go to our website, Twin Flames Ascension School, or TwinFlamesUniverse.com, <laughs> you can go to that website, so it'll redirect you. Yeah. Better. Uh, you can get yourself uh, a login for free and, and get, uh, I think it's five classes you can watch for free and they're 90 minutes. It's quite a, quite a good value. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. I'm gonna check over here to the Facebook yeah, and uh, we'll see if Facebook. we've got any group, any questions yet from the group. I think you have to refresh it. Yeah. yeah, ask your questions. We'd love to help you um, on your Twin Flame journey, wherever you are on your Twin Flame journey, whether you're in separation or union or you're in harmonious union, married even. Um, 
And, you know, wherever you are, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to ask your questions in the group. So I see, I see it here on the phone, but I don't see it on the Facebook group yet. So let me... If only they used that microphone that's on the camera a little bit better or got a different one, we wouldn't have this problem. Let me just hit refresh again. It should be here and everyone, there's 49 people watching. Okay, give us a second. Uh, no! I don't think the second coming of Jesus would have to, you know, navigate oh, okay. these problems. Cool. Right, Lulu? Am I right? Your name, yeah? Click on, click on your name. Will that, like, tell it? Show Maybe. You? Oh, there it yeah. is. Oh, oh it looks so good. Look at us. Sweet. Go wow. by comments. Okay. Okay. I think we're here. We're, we're about to uh, check out the comments. Here we go. Please. I think I see a... This might be a question from Azul. Azul says, In my journey through the teachings of... Uh, your teachings in Shalia, I'm realizing that the Twin Flame Path is probably the least about achieving the desired harmonious union. For my part, I'm discovering what I desire the most is the peace that I find after each block healed. Mm -hmm. I want to live in that peace and unconditional love uh, for myself and my relationship with God. How much truth is there in this? How can I really live in the present and in this connection with God? I'm tired of feeling bad and I'm ready to be okay. This is a great question. That's a good question. She's yeah. really saying, uh, she realized, you know, a lot of people come here for Twin Flames. They come here right. because they hear the call. And uh, we described this in our YouTube video, um, uh, Twin Flames Explained. Yeah. And we talk about how Twin Flames are a call to ascension, a call back home to your creator. God, this is pretty boring. This is pretty boring, everybody. I want to take a break from this for just a quick second. I know we just started, but I was just searching <laughs> for this one specific video that they show in the Netflix documentary. Oh, look, perfect. I fit in this in this way, too. Um, this is called Stalking My Twin Flame. <laughs> um, this is a different class. This is called BeWithYourTwinFlame.com. Um, and people have been messaging me and saying that there's another thing, twin rays as well. Twin flames are one thing, but twin rays are a whole nother thing. Um, this is a different person called Be With Your Twin Flame, The Secret to Being With Your Twin Flame. Um, has a magnetize your twin flame coaching. So I guess this would be considered a competitor to the twin flames universe. What a wonderful photo that is. Um, okay, so I'm curious, just to go, just to just to see something else for a second. I got to see what this video is about. Called, like I said, here's the title: "Stalking My Twin Flame." <laughs> I just want to see what she's got to say about this. Aloha, kakahiaka, and happy Thursday, everyone! Happy fall season! Happy October! my favorite time of the year. My name is Aniela and I'm a coach with the Be With Your Twin Flame program. We are in this wonderful fall mood, this Halloween mood. They all need microphones. You know, lately it's just been, so, I, it, I just love this time of the year. It's so cool and it just, it's, it's getting ready to go into a really happy time of the year, the holiday season. And um, we are talking today about something that is so um, related to all of the things you see out there, the Halloween movies, the Halloween theme, the things that freak you out and scare. Speaking of freaking you out, I stalk my ex. You shitless. <laughs> We're talking about those kind of things today. And I'm talking about stalking the twin flame. Do I know all about this? I absolutely do, folks, because, hey, A number one right here. So you're going to want to stay tuned because I am going to tell you something that is going to absolutely knock your shoes off. It's probably going to be something that you don't even realize right now. But when we're talking about stalking your twin flame, you know, think of this, think of this, picture this. 
you know, these are one of the images in my mind that I used to have as a child that used to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> it did, because it was just so odd. You know, think of these Halloween movies and think of the villains and the bad guys and the monsters in those movies. You know, you're walking down the street and there's a street lamp and you see, you know, the mask. You see the knife, you see the wig or whatever you want to call it. And they're there just looking at you. <laughs> they're looking at you. You look out a window. They, they have the characters in these movies looking out a window. And boom, there's that face, you know, looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> is she going to say that this is her? Like, you know these Halloween movies where they have masks and knives and things? Like, I just, this brings me to a great point about my experience as a stalker. I look at, I look at that and I have memories and I laugh a little, but man, you know, when I stop and think about it, those kind of things used to freak me out. You know, I, I, I can always remember seeing these scenes in these movies. Get to it, lady. You're kind of hurrying along and you turn around and you feel like you've gone quite a ways. You turn around and you look, and he's there, he's behind you. He's looking at you. He's got that mask on his face. He's got that knife in his hand. If you remember those and you remember the feelings that you had with those, it is very funny when you stop and think that a lot of us, you know, metaphorically and even in the physical when it comes to energy, that's what we're doing when we are watching, watching our twin flame. It's crazy. It's crazy. In fact, someone told me, you know, when I was in the very, very beginning of my, my twin uh, stages Sorry. of my twin flame journey, in the very beginning of my journey, excuse me, um, that, you know, like if I'm looking on social media and I'm checking out all these things, you know, I'm stalking my TF and I'm like, no, no, that's not stalking. <laughs> no, it's public information. They put it on there, folks. When it comes to this journey, and even in 3D, it is, it is. And the funny, funny thing, when you think about it in those movies, you know, you, you turn a corner, you look behind you, you look ahead of you. There's that stalker, that, that villain, that bad guy monster from the movie. They're stalking you, they're watching you. At least you know. <laughs> At least, there's the difference. You knew. You knew he was coming to get oh, you. Man. You knew he was coming to get the character, the main character in that movie. You knew it. You knew it. She was dead meat. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. But that's the difference between that and stalking a twin flame is because most of the time, I'm sure, you make it very unknown that you are stalking your twin flame. You make it very unknown until- Yeah, this feels like it's gonna be put into evidence at some point in a court of law. Um, okay. Okay, queen, this is terrifying. Um, I don't know if we're gonna get to a point where this is gonna come to a conclusion, uh, but seems like this is someone that we should <laughs> Be wary of, I would imagine. If you see this person waiting outside your house, run back inside and call the police. Uh, MB, thank you so much, MB. MB says, what a delightfully level-headed bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, I agree, I agree. We're best friends. They are all of our best friends. And also? bold face lie. That was a lie. Um, okay, well... I feel like this person is on a rant and it's not quite making sense. But after this, we're going to watch um, a Jeff and Chalia video to explain uh, what, what to do when you're blocked from your twin flame. I, I would love to hear because that's sort of related to this video. So let's keep watching this just for a couple seconds to see what, if there's anything else. What I used to hear in, from my coach, El Hari, very early in my journey, it's unknown until you accidentally, especially on social media we're talking folks, hit the like button, right? You're looking, looking, looking. Oh my gosh, you're holding your phone. You're, you're on your laptop, you're looking, and oops, the cough, the, the water went to spill. The phone went to fall. Click, like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Do you remember how you used to feel when seeing these characters in the movie? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. 
Like I said, someone had told me, and I refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe that. You know, Ella used to tell me all the time, it's not helping you, Ella. It doesn't help you. You know, she used to, that was totally what I needed to hear. And when she was able to get that message to me, Aniela, you're stalking, and that's not helping your fear-based energy. I was like, oh, shit, shit. I didn't realize what I was doing. So, folks, when you're doing that, why? Why are you doing that? Oh, okay. You know, cool. if people do not want to believe for one second that this, this journey is an energetic journey, they're doing that for two reasons. Actually, when you're looking at it from 3D because you refuse, Okay, so I'm, I guess I guess what she's trying to say is don't stalk. So we support her. <laughs> don't stalk. Yay! That was a wild journey to get to that point, but I'm gonna assume that she's saying that it did not help her to stalk her Quinn Flames ultimately, and that is a message I can get behind. <laughs> oh Lord, <laughs> that was quite something. Okay, um, but speaking of blocking and being blocked and stalked, um, let's hear their spiritual take why your twin flame won't contact you the real reason okay and they have the answers this is in her goth phase this is in their their um satanism phase <laughs> looks like ah <laughs> uh, okay um did i miss anything did i miss courtney king welcome courtney king thank you so much welcome to the membership okay here we go Hi, welcome back to our channel. I'm Shalia. And I'm Jeff. And we're talking about the real reason why your twin flame won't contact you. So this is a really fun and juicy topic. And, um, you know, I think a lot of us, uh, not me, but uh, a lot of people, <laughs> and, um, you know, I say that with respect, right? Like a lot of people experience um, you know, their twin flame not contacting them, and um, yeah, it can feel very painful, it can feel very difficult and challenging, and you know, not sure what to do, or like, you know, you've been blocked on like Facebook and, and your phone and email, all of it, right? And all you want to do is just like desperately get in, in touch with them, you know, and hopefully reestablish your line of communication and connection. It's a fun one in Ascension School. Uh, yeah, I mean a lot of people that uh, are in our classes, yes of course they experience this issue too. <laughs> so we're going to talk about why your twin flame won't contact you. And um, for me, what I know to be very true is if your twin flame is not contacting you, there is a very good reason why. Yeah. And you and should- Because you're stalking them. <laughs> And you're being creepy, probably, and they are married or have other things going on in their life, probably. Not because they're a douchebag. Right. You should trust that, you know. And I mean, yeah, trust that they're not being a douchebag, even though that feels like your experience. Douchebag. But um, at the core of this issue is a jewel. And it's that your twin flame is mirroring something for you. Okay, you and your twin flame are one. This is something that you just need to really integrate into your consciousness and understanding that you are not separate from your twin flame. I see this in so many places, like, you know, on, uh, you know, Facebook twin flame groups and on YouTube videos, like, uh, everywhere. Like, people still want to harbor this idea that their twin flame is outside of them, meaning they have to do something to make you happy or and that um it's all their fault like oh they need to change they need to spiritually grow and develop they need to you know <laughs> jeff is ascending right now <laughs> he's ascending to a different conversation because <laughs> he does not look like he's all there yeah shalia has spoken much more uh in this video than any of the other videos previously wow she's got a lot to say on this one she's like i got the one about the blocking let me just take it from here and he was just like eh. <laughs> that's what this face shows me eh. <laughs> eh. that's what i'm hearing from him 
They'll fix themselves. They have to do this. Oh, oh my gosh. I've like heard and seen it all and I'm always like, oh, like don't you know? Like, <laughs> um, they're you and like this is where you need to like grow and develop and this is where like you need to change. You know, and, and stop focusing on them having to change so that you can be together. Like, um, it doesn't work that way, honey. Like, it works that you two are one. Whatever uh, is upsetting you about them is because they're reflecting something. They're mirroring something in your union together as one. So it's like two aspects of you that are, like, fighting and, like, disconnected. And look, we'll, we'll tell you something here. If you know, tell I'll us. make a deal with you. Okay. <laughs> One million dollars to you from us. If you can do it the other way, the way that you've been trying and that's failing, ah! the way that you want to do it, mm -hmm. the way that seems like the right way, the way that everyone else tells you to do it, <laughs> you Not can stalking. do it that way truly. And I see it. All right. I'm gonna give you a million dollars. You don't have to do anything because the masculine's coming home, baby. <laughs> Blame them. Yeah, that's great. But at the end of the day, listen to what we're saying. Right. We're not saying it because we want to be counter. Really what are you yeah. saying? We're so counterculture. No. <laughs> like, look at look at us. Like we, we're wearing like normal clothes, and there's like you know like normal stuff. You see my car. It's like a normal car. Like I I try I, I desire to be just about as normal as it gets. <laughs> I'm not trying to be counterculture here. Yeah. Foreshadowing for when they get a Porsche. <laughs> He's like, I drove a Saturn, piece of shit Saturn that I hated. This time he's like, I just, I'm normal, guys. I'm very relatable. I'm a relatable dude. I just want to be relatable. I want to be relatable. <clears throat> okay. I'm just showing you the only way possible. Or and it's exactly what Shalia is telling you to do. So my bet is good forever. If you ever... Blame your way into your harmonious twin flame. <laughs> Come on over to my house. I'll invite you as an honored guest. I'll get the best chefs in the world to lay out a dinner for you. And I'll give it to you in cash, any currency. And this is equivalent to U.S. dollars. You fear and blame your way into your union. Mm. My deal is good. But I'll tell you what. I ain't never going to have to pay out that bet. Because at the end of the day, you're going to get frustrated on that path because it doesn't work. Right. Not because you didn't try hard enough, you didn't blame hard enough, you didn't stomp, stomp your foot down hard enough and <laughs> shake your fist hard enough, but because it's stupid. You're not going to blame them into a relationship, let alone a harmonious union with them. With, you know, you. Yeah, right. You have to. Just as Shalia said, and just as we say every video, every course, every class in Ascension School and in our book and everything we do, that's how we live, that's how we are, that's how we got here, really. Really, really, <laughs> that's how we got here. Not to shake your fist, but we mirrored, we looked at the mirror work and we said, oh, I'm upset with her because right. she is doing this thing. Right. I'm upset with myself because I'm doing this thing and I loved myself and, and Je I resolved it. Jeff and I have, been, have said this in previous videos and on Facebook, like, there is absolutely nothing that makes us separate from you. We are not special. Like someone commented, oh, you know, we were predestined before birth. And basically, You're so lucky. basically we don't have the authorization to talk about this because we're not like everyone else. Well, if you want to know why, because we took a different path. We made a different choice. We're like, oh, well, this doesn't work. Well, what if we try this? What if what if we do this and this will work? Yeah, it requires change. You have to change if you're not willing to change. I don't know what they're talking about. Give me an example. Like oh, everyone, every self help person slash spirituality person slash whatever, it's all the levels are so high. Like none of it's actually like relevant to anything. Like oh, we tried this and then we tried something else and then we did another thing. It's like what is the point of this conversation? Why don't you just tell me what those steps were? What am I watching this video for? It's just filler words. I hate it. Word salad. Word salad emoji right now. Oh, God. Uh, MB. MB. Thank you so much. MB says, Dear Jeff, what the fuck are you talking about? Best regards, MB. <laughs> what are any of them talking about? What happened to dinosaurs? I mean, I don't even know. I don't know. This is all I know. I do not give a fuck. Okay, cool. 
That's all I know. Am I right? Am I right? No. Oh, well, there you go. <sighs> this is, it's like, it's hard. There's one thing I will give Rachel Hollis specifically, not even Heidi. She's the only creator that I talk about regularly on this channel that like I don't get sick of listening to for like an hour. <laughs> Like she enrages me, of course, based on like what she says, but at least I can get through it. These people, Heidi Powell's podcast, <sighs> Craig makes me want to watch. I like watching Craig as well. He, he keeps me entertained, but these people, it's tough. It's like, they're not even saying anything. It like <sighs> gets me like bored. Change, how the hell are you going to get different results? How are you gonna get into your harmonious twin flame union if you're not willing to open up and allow yourself to be changed by listening to what the divine is asking you to open into? Guys, stop resisting it. This one is the biggest derp. Derp. It's the biggest derp, and we're, we're obviously plainly laying it before you. Right. But once you see it Thanks. and you look back at what you were trying to do before, you're like, oh, derp. <laughs> wow. Right. Just you can trust us. Right. You can stop doing the derp and just get the result. It's not hard. Part of the problem I notice is when people are in this situation of their twin flame not contacting them, um, is that they're, you, they, whatever, so numbed out, so numbed the fuck out from uh, this huge block inside of them and they're trying to do something that is outside of them to resolve this separation issue in their twin flame union um that a lot of times there is there is very little if any fruitful results that come from reaching out to the other twin flame without actually doing the spiritual work and clearing the blocks and loving themselves you know like really um, releasing a lot of um, the pain and upset that has been, like, cause they're not listening to something inside of you. This is one of the big, this is the big thing, elephant in the room of why your twin would talk to you is because you're not talking to a part of yourself because you're numbed out from it. And as long as you choose to be numbed out from that part of you that is in pain and that is demanding to be felt, and asking for the healing that it desires, uh, you're t I can't take it anymore, everybody. I'm so sorry. <laughs> when, when I'm numbed impact? out. He's numbed out. We're all numbed out. This is nothing. Nothing has been said. I don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. I can't take it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't take it. I need to find another video. <laughs> I can't deal with these people. At least the other lady talking about Freddy Krueger was interesting. Oh, okay. This one is from a year ago. It says, is your twin, this is from the actual Twin Flames Universe YouTube page. So it's official. It's an official video. Is your twin flame married to someone else? Watch this. Okay. This is what I need. Tell me what to do. Random people. Back to Twin Flames Universe. I'm Charles. And I'm Oceana and we are Twin Flames in Harmonious Union and students of Jeff and Shalia. And today's video topic is about what if you're married, your twin flame is married to somebody else, <laughs> or maybe you're watching this and you're married and you're trying to be with your twin flame. So, you know, whatever the scenario is, we're here to help you and support you. And if you stay tuned, you're going to learn a little bit how to navigate this situation Just because chilling. you are meant to be with your ultimate lover and nothing should feel like that can stand in the way between you two. So the first thing that we wanna share is that, you know, twin flames being married is a very sacred, very valuable relationship. It is, Absolutely. yes, it is the highest form of marriage to be married to your twin flame. And it triumphs over being married to somebody else that is not your twin flame. You know, you'll find that you will be really unhappy <laughs> being married to anyone else that's not your twin flame. And if you're seeing, like, you, if you know deep in your heart, you feel and know that, you know, this person is your twin flame, but 
you know, for example, they're married, you don't need to feel shame or guilt about pursuing them and having that desire in your heart. Aww. And, you know, like we're saying that, yeah, it is the highest form of marriage and it's safe to claim that for yourself and to know. Let's ask the husband and wives involved in this decision. <laughs> How do they feel though? <laughs> you don't have to feel shame about pursuing them. Um, okay. Go on. That that marriage that your twin flame is in, or even, you know, that you're in, as you heal and do the inner work, that marriage will naturally crumble and, and fall away. Because really that person is essentially like a place filler. They really are, you know, they're not, they're, they weren't designed to be with your twin flame, be with you. And so as you heal through these blocks around being with your twin flame, and the challenges that are being presented to you, the marriage will just wither away. It'll, it'll naturally fall away. And it will actually be, it'll be an easy process. It doesn't have to. Be. If it doesn't happen, just stab them. And you know, it'll just, they'll just, they'll just go away from there. You know, take matters into your own hands is what we're going to tell you guys to do because this is divinely ordered. <laughs> this is the part that scares me. It's like, oh my God, like, this is a slippery slope of belief, I believe, you know, when you start thinking this way, like, oh yeah, marriages don't matter. Oh yeah, I am destined to be with this person no matter what, like God's earth depends on me being with this person. That would probably put you in a pretty desperate mindset. That is usually a kind of a turnoff to people, especially people who have restraining orders against you um, because you won't leave them alone. So yeah, I don't know. This advice is scary and weird be some intense divorce or anything like that it actually can be a very easy peaceful process for you and your twin flame because you're meant to be yeah you're meant to be <laughs> and so another thing too is that maybe if you are in a lot of times too you know in these situations uh there may even be children involved you may have children you may have, you know, that situation where, oh my goodness, <laughs> what am I going to do? And ch your children, like, they just want you to be happy. They're a blessing. Yeah, they're a blessing. They just want you to be happy. And when they see, you know. Um, <laughs> yes and no. As a former child, as I always say, uh, yes, of course I want my parents to be happy, but y you as a parent should be thinking about their happiness as well. <laughs> It's not only like, oh yeah, uh, break up the marriage so you can go pursue and stalk some random person. Like, I don't know. That seems like they're just like, don't worry about your children. They're inconsequential. They just want your happiness. It's like, they want your happiness. Yes. But also think twice about the commitment you've made to these children to raise them, you know, in a stable environment. Uh, Think about the commitment you've made to your husband or wife um, before you got involved with this you know, zany cult. Maybe just think about it before you make any rash decisions. You happy, you in love, everybody feels good, everybody feels peaceful, you know, for the most part, and that's important. And you should never feel like, in this just in general, that you have to stay with somebody because you have children. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it's not like a death sentence, you know? Great. Uh, Brian Puckett, this is a good question. So are the matching twin flames people getting assigned with other universe members or random civilians? So in the beginning, when this first began, it was random civilians. So you would go into the group and say, this guy at work is super cute. And they would say, yeah, that's your twin flame. Or you'd say, oh, my ex-boyfriend from 10 years ago, uh, we had a real big spark. Is this my twin flame? And Jeff and Shalia would be like, mm, let me consult God. Mm, God, what do you think? Yes, it is. And then whatever. But then that led to them getting stalking charges against them. This one woman was like, I think she was in jail for a couple of days because she, you know, had a, restrain, a restraining order was taken out against her, against from her twin flame. And she kept bumping into him around town. And he eventually just like, you know, put an end to it and went to court over it. 
to stop her um, from contacting him because it was becoming too much. And Jeff and Shalia were purposely telling her to keep going for it, keep going for it, keep trying. Like she was a pussy essentially if she didn't keep trying to, you know, pursue this man over and over and over again. And um, she's featured the Netflix documentary and it's just sad all around. It's like taking someone again, who's vulnerable and like indoctrinating them um, and kind of, you know, I don't know, psychologically messing them up and then having all the supporters also get behind it and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Good idea. This is ordained by God. It's like very dangerous behavior. Um, but then after that, period of time was over I think Jeff and Shalia realized like the best idea is to just pair people up you have more unity within the group you you know everyone gets a you get a husband you get a wife you get a partner you get a twin flame like everyone gets one um so then they switched it to you have to join the group and then just oh divine you know divineness brought you both into this group and now you are matched up and that's why there was a not um even amount of women and men. So that's why some women had a transition and, you know, into different genders. So to fit that quota, I guess. You're going to say something? It just, it just, in the long run, it hurts the kids the most. Yes, that's true. It does hurt the kids the most because they just want to see, you know, how, what healthy relationships look like and not parents, you know, what's the word? Just trying to make it, for them. Right, right. And allowing themselves to suffer and, you know, being being something that they don't- Content. Yeah, just be content and not being something they belong. Yeah. No. Uh, a part and a part of. And so you don't need to be with, stay with, you know, anybody because you have children. And, you know, children just want you to see that you have, are happy and you have a healthy relationship. And when you show them that, you give them the gift of seeing what real love is, what real relationships is, and you pass that down onto them. And that is really beautiful and a very valuable thing to to teach them and to give to them. And uh, you, I know you have something to say too. Yeah, it's, it's just giving them a gift, and it's you know they're able to use it throughout their life, and then pass it on to their children or whoever else they want to be around. And whoever they want in their life and just it's yeah, it's one of the best gifts you can possibly give someone being with your twin flame is meant for you and no matter how hard and what your situation looks like on the outside <laughs> no matter what people you know have to say about it just perceive what they believe and what they see yeah and you know and, and <laughs> even if you are experiencing shame or guilt because of this situation wondering well how am i going to pursue this because you know he's married or she's married just keep going keep healing those blocks and those challenges because really you know and this is another thing too is that twin flames are a marriage that is literally made in heaven it's literally made in heaven it is divine and like we had said the highest form of marriage and so, you know, with that marriage, it's just, of course, we're here on the earth, physical, but it's just an earthbound, earthly, Hence, made, heaven on <laughs> earthly made marriage. And so healing is going to help, you know, dissolve that false marriage that is there and allow you guys to just come together and to experience your heaven on earth and hopefully experience your harmonious union that is meant for you as well. And know that... This is, um, yeah, it's a divine and sacred path of marriage and and you have the work and you have the support here, the community and the teachings of union to help support you and to help you move through everything that's presented to you here and know that you don't need to fall into the, the trap and the illusion of fear and, oh my God, my twin flame is married. How am I gonna get through this? It's the end of the world. Just keep going, keep healing, and, and always remember, manifest. <laughs> yeah, your your thoughts and your feelings. <laughs> always about remember, the situation manifest is really is what's gonna help you, you know, manifest everything into the physical of how oh God. You things, you know, to be and to desire, and you know, doing the inner work. That's part of that process.
These people are gifted and not saying much. Just like if he's married, like just like you know, keep going. It's fine. It's like, give us nothing. Give us nothing exciting other than toxic feelings. Um, okay. The thing is, for this channel, there's not much. It's mostly like these people. My relationship with my divine masking was a nightmare. <laughs> Shocking. Until, um, life purpose class. Let's look at their Instagram for a minute. Okay, this is the Instagram for the church. Let me go back. Let me look at their Instagram for the... I also, just so everyone knows, um, they blocked me. I don't even know how the fuck they blocked me. I've had no contact with them, Twin Flames Universe, and they blocked me from before I even did this video. <laughs> so, <laughs> the first stream. So they must have been on to me. I don't know. So weird, right? Very normal. Very normal. Okay, here's this. Uh, hi, I'm Shalia. I was born and raised in Canada, but I've been living in Michigan for almost eight years now. I've been married in harmonious union with my true twin flame for seven years. The reason I'm here and here is because I know the pain of twin flame separation. This is me shortly after getting engaged to my fiance. <laughs> uh, what? Engaged to your fiance that was not Jeff? Okay. Poor guy. <laughs> I mean, he might've been horrible, but still it's like, <laughs> put this dude on blast, your former fiance. I did my best to make it work, but nothing was working. You can't force something that is not meant to be. I went on a two and a half year spiritual journey to the desert to find my spiritual teacher and to heal my heart. I never gave up on love nor my twin flame. I finally had a major breakthrough and met my twin flame shortly after I released my false twin flame. I believe, oof, that hair, Jeff, what was going on there, buddy? I believe from study and experience that everyone has a twin flame. I believe our society is apathetic and disillusioned about romantic love. <laughs> I think our society is very much obsessed with romantic love. I believe we are in a spiritual revolution, un uniting twin flames in harmony and love forever. Okay. Let's see. Came to this work looking for your twin oh, I can't use, I can't do the music. I can't do the music. Um, yeah, their Instagram seems to be not a lot of Jeff and Shalia. These are a lot of the members, it seems like. Should I contact my twin flame first? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to one more session of life with Twin Flames Universe. Oh, my God. I can't. I can't take it. Molly Godspeed. Thank you. Welcome. Hmm. This is the secret. Every harmonious union says the same thing. Oh, the music. Okay, let's do one more look at the page. Um, we were going to talk about the church, but I feel like the church is actually less about them uh, than it seemed. Let's see. I don't want to sign up for anything. I know there's some people who signed up for stuff. Let's see. Let's see. Twin flame, sex, celibacy, and ascension. Magic, sex, life. A lot of sex videos. They're so boring, though. I don't know. Twin flames checklist. Ugh. Are we done with twin flames? Are we over it? Um, can we move on to other... Um, cults. <laughs> okay, wait. Let's do one more video. I'll give it one more shot. We'll do Jeff exploiting twin flame fault caller. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff exploiting twin flame cult followers. Okay, there you go. Say that five times fast. Twin flame cult followers. Twin flame cult followers. Illegally. On website. Okay. Here we go. Let's just let's just do it. We've already made it this far. Oh yeah, and the celebrities. We got to look at the celebrities. That's what I'm going to pull up in the in the meantime. Okay. 
the twin i don't know where i found it twin flames universe it was on their blog celebrity hold on wait okay time magazine maybe justin hold on I found this and then I left it, let it go like a dum dum. Hold on. In the meantime, listen to my voice. I have something to say. I just want to tell you that I have something to say. I just want to tell you that Justin Bieber is supposed to be with Billie Eilish. Justin, let's see. And yeah, maybe it was on their Facebook. Oh, they had a whole list. Okay, looking it up. Twin Flames Universe, Justin Bieber. Okay. Here it is, Justin. They channeled on Facebook. Okay, so it's on their Facebook. All right. So I must have seen it there. That's the stuff I want to hear. That's and, fun. Uh, That's fun and funky. Hold on, hold on. We're searching, we're searching. We're making this work. I'm sorry, I apologize. For the wait, the delay. Justin. Celebrities? Okay. <clears throat> of course, we got some uh, Trump stuff. I guess they like Trump. Na, 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 na. You know who also liked Trump was um, was uh, the mother of God. Or the mother of whatever cult that I just watched. The the love has one cult. They like Trump as well. And Robin Williams, <laughs> for some reason. Oh, dang, it's gone. Oh. oh okay, so here, I'll show you. Um, I guess, yeah, Gandhi is back. Find out who he is. But you click on it. And I'd you. be close to just takes you to the main page and then this one was who is back famous reincarnated celebrities revealed oh god you see that gandhi is back and so is martin luther king jr unfortunately hitler is too okay and then part two of celebrity twin flames well you click on it it's done dang okay never mind well we tried we tried to have fun and they won't let us they won't even let us have that don't even let us have fun for five seconds. I'm going to look just in case, though, one more time. She said it was 2019. Maybe I can scroll back enough to find it. Ah, soul pets, twin flames, same-sex twin flames, fast-track yourself. You cannot silence us. They're having a baby. Okay, twin flames. All right, here, I'll put it back on here. We can look at it together. The time is now. Who is this? What is up, everyone? I am Jeff, and today we're going to do a reading, my first reading back on my YouTube channel from the Energy Oracle Cards from Sandra Ann Taylor. Uh, this is a great deck, an essential deck in our collection and um, here in my living room and these are pre-shuffle but I always like just another little shuffle just give it a just a quick little little refresher that refresher feels really nice lame okay um is 35 too old <laughs> yes twin flames universe video my heart sings where is the gosh darn Justin Bieber video We are multimillionaires. Okay, that's around the time they were doing these. 
Reserve a copy. Oh, okay. Okay, we got to the good stuff. All right, we settled. We, we were here long enough. The classes, that's what we need. Well, this is where they start bullying everybody. Okay, let's watch some bully people. Yay. This will be fun. Okay. The bullying has already been done, so we, we can enjoy okay, it. Okay, In the sense of we can watch them do it. <laughs> Welcome, India. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Now, oh, these are real people on the calls. Welcome to our third class for Twin Flame Ascension School. I'm Jeff. I'm Shalia. And today we have a juicy and rich class in store for you. We're going to talk about, of course, Twin Flames. We're going to talk about soul families. We're going to talk about the spiritual journey, the Ascension journey. We're going to talk about what it takes to get from wherever you are all the way into Harmonious Union. We're going to do some really excellent work today, really beautiful stuff. So join us in the third and final free class for Twin Flame Ascension School. If you want to keep watching these, we're going to go a minimum of 100 classes of Twin Flame Ascension School. We're going to do this every week for about two years at least. We're going to bring people wow. into Harmonious Union. All those who are able to choose love. So you see... Eight beautiful faces before you today. Nine now, bitch. One is missing. <laughs> and we will not mourn, uh, Gregory. Although you may think that it's very sad that he will not be continuing to inflame Ascension School. However, uh, his leaving is a really good lesson for everyone. Poor Gregory. Everyone. And it's really awesome that this came up so quickly um, in this live class so that you could see what this is before you go deeper. Because you're going to need to know this before you go deeper. You're going to need to know what it takes. And we're going to, you know, use Gregory's experience here that, you know, he was live and shared with all of us Poor as a Gregory. lesson. Mm. Now, um... It's very unfortunate for Gregory that he chose to leave Ascension School. And the reasons he chose to leave were, um, the game was that it was financial, but that's not true at all. <laughs> so both Gregory and his twin flame left Ascension School, not very nice ways. Uh -oh. His twin flame in a very not nice way, um, within a week of coming into Union. Drama! You know, we'll, don't worry, we'll address the whole issue completely here. Yes! It's beautiful, you're going to find out. Well, gee. Let's bash Greg. Come on. This is the this is a drama. This is the hot pipe and I'm waiting for, baby. It's okay to cry. Greg's going down in flames. Okay. I'm doing some of these things that um, mm -hmm. caused him to leave. Or I've had this choice before, and I chose the other way, but, you know, it keeps coming up. What does this mean? And it's a beautiful lesson. Now, unfortunately for him, he took the very, very hard route. He chose pain. He chose contrast. And that's fine, you know? Mm -hmm. You need to come into it on your own. Yeah, you need to come it. into your perfect love on your own. Meaning you must do it. Right. We can guide you. And there's no reason not to have us support you if you're ready to call that in. Mm -hmm. But um, And remember, I think this, this class call, costs $3,333, if I'm not mistaken. The Ascension School package. Um, cause there's courses, but like the actual Ascension school, which is this one, um, that is what, uh, they're all in. So that's like, you know, several grand, couple grand. Ultimately your journey is yours and no one them. can do it for you. No one can do it for you. However, we do have a very solid ironclad guarantee. <laughs> and yeah. $3,333 to join this. There you go. Ironclad guarantee, okay? Here's his ironclad guarantee. And it in no way contrasts anything we've said before, and it's we guarantee harmonious union with your truth and flame as a result of this class. Right. Okay. We guarantee you will arrive in harmonious union if you stay with it. And in the previous class or classes... If you stay with it and tell, tell, like, just listen to who we assign you to, we guarantee that we will force them to marry you. Okay, that's good. That's good. I said, hey, we hope that all of these students will stay. But I know quite well that even though I brought in some of my best students 
people I'm you know the most confident in, um, inevitably, some people will not make it. And that doesn't mean they're never going to make it. Right. One day, I'm sure, I'm actually certain that everyone will make it into Harmonious Union. Yeah. One day. Yeah. And just because Gregory has made a different choice doesn't mean he's harming anyone. Doesn't even mean he's harming himself. He can't be harmed. It just means that he's choosing contrast. It just that means that he's not ready yet for real love. And he Aww. would tell you, oh, no, no, I'm ready for real love. I'm just going to do it apart from all of you. Well, that's not the case. He said it was money, but if it really was money, he would have come to us and said, I, I really want to continue. I don't know how to afford it. What do I do? Right. We're and, reasonable people. Yeah. <laughs> We're we not going to give you the old boot. worked something out, right? Right. Would have worked something out. We um, had it in our minds that we were willing to play for his Twin Flames plane ticket to come be with him. Right. Because we love love and we love to support it. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, um, there's nothing we could have done for him. So, let's we shame him publicly. Said goodbye to him. We're saying goodbye to him. He actually had a chance to come to this class for free, um, but chose not to. So I think uh, uh, a good example that I um, was Move given on. to by God of um, you know Gosh. people sometimes think that. Um, you know, they can pay for a spiritual reading or pay for a spiritual service or product and that it's going to um, give them something without them actually participating. And it's absolutely akin to being pregnant and giving birth. No one can birth your baby for you, mm -hmm. but you can, you know, holler for support. You can have a midwife, you can have a doula, you can have a doctor, mm -hmm. you can have like, um, you know, your partner to support you. All You call in your support, because mm -hmm. uh, it's a big deal, right? It's a big deal birthing your harmonious twin flame union, but like Jeff and I can't magically you know, bring you your harmonious union like a, a genie in a bottle. No, but we can walk you from here. Well, we there. can walk you through it. We can be the midwife here. Mm -hmm. You know, but and that's we know it. that's that our if you role stay with us, you can't possibly not come into harmonious union because okay. the agreement is that you'll continue to choose love. And if you choose love, you will eventually stumble upon it. Even if you're the slowest student in the whole world, if you're just choosing love, you will arrive. Mm -hmm. Or even if you have the grandest journey in the whole world, if you're just choosing love, you will arrive. And if you're not choosing love, you will vibrate out of our reality. It happens. What does that mean? It doesn't bother us. Is that a threat? We don't mind it. We're very used to it. It's free will. I mean. Everyone has their own <laughs> You can't argue choice. that. Mm -hmm. But um, we choose love completely, indefinitely, 100%, unconditionally. And so unless you're moving toward that, you're gonna vibrate away from that. Fuck Gregory. And if you're moving toward also. that, you're going to um, upheave. Blech. You're going to do spiritual work. You're going to be required to do spiritual work. You can't be close to us and avoid your spiritual work. You'll just ignore. You'll just go do something else and stop coming to our channel. Literally, this is a person who wanted their money back, I'm assuming, from the course. They felt like they were ripped off or they didn't like it. And this is the response. It's so crazy. Like, imagine going to, like, Target and you go, actually, I don't want this milk and bread and candles anymore. And I just give it back. And the cashier's like, oh, my God, you will never ascend. You're not ready for this milk and, and bread. And you and everyone in the store needs to know that you say it's a money problem. But I just think that you don't want it. You don't think that Target you're going to Walmart or something. You don't think Target's good enough for you, do you? Well, we need to talk about this for the next 30 minutes on the next time everyone comes into the store and tell them how horrible you are as a person. <laughs> How stupid you are it's like oh my god just get to it it's been seven minutes already these poor people at the bottom are like when are we going to talk about us getting you know partners or you won't come to classes or whatever it may be for your experience right i think they're trying to stop like a uh, rebellion or you know uh, an upheaval of everyone else leaving now like a pyramid or a domino effect of like well gregory left well, let me go ask why so i can leave too and you make up whatever excuse you want but that excuse is, ultimately, I'm not ready for real love yet. <clears throat> okay. Doesn't bother us. We hope that you find love soon. Sounds like it We're bothers here. you a lot. Sharing it. 
showing you the way, Can inviting I? you with an open heart and open arms. You don't have to. Oh. So well, one thing Fabi and I were talking about, because he was trying to um, work with me to help Gregory stick around, is that, well, you know, Gregory is my soul family. And Fabian's been with us for a year, and Anthony is, they're all soul family here. <clears throat> well, um, I'm not sure if you guys heard this yet, but one of our soul family members <laughs> just quit Ascension School, too. Two people, and, you know, in one day, confirmed. And um, one of the interesting things is that this person, and they'll remain anonymous, and please don't speak their name, was supposed to, this person is from our soul family, and is the other, there's two people in our soul family, two, you know, unions in our soul family, that uh, have three, three uh, people in it, and that was the other one. <laughs> three twins, yeah. Right, that was another person <laughs> with uh, one feminine and two masculine twin flames, you know, lovers and a child, the same as us. We have... Two feminines and one masculine right. twin flame. So I'm Lovers thinking, the there goes our in, there, there goes the in-laws. <laughs> right, but Shelly and I, we no. sat down and had a deep discussion about it. Yeah, that whole thing, two lovers and a child, I'm like, mm, something ain't right. Something ain't right about that, just the way they're making it sound to me. We said, well, what, what are we missing here? Yeah, Voldemort left. He left the building. Mm. Where is Voldemort? Lord Voldemort. Here it is. No, this is Harry Potter. Where is Voldemort? Dang. I'm a medium. I channel all day. As I was sitting in the cold plunge. <laughs> Or two new ones. I don't know where my Lord Voldemort one went, but that was uh, our girl Maria from Scent Bird. And uh, we're gonna go into some intricacies of Twin Flames because it's fun, <laughs> and um, we actually need to discuss it to move forward and feel good about it, right? Today. Oh, we dive deep every day. I know, but you can't. We can't help <laughs> it, right? So the first question is, well, aren't we bound? Aren't Shalia and I bound to that member of our soul family? Right. We thought we were almost like there were six of us in a union in a way. Like, aren't we bound to this other union? That's not the case, though. But no, it's absolutely not the case. And I think um, this goes into the discussion of multiple twin flames. And I know mm. there's a lot of questions and uh, confusion about it. Like, how does that work? How is... Our other twin flame, uh, we're just going to call her Grace, because it is a feminine energy, mm -hmm. although uh, she could manifest as a man. But anyway, uh, how does that work? This just feels like when you're, when you're a kid and you're playing a game and the rules are sort of vague, you know, you're playing t a version of tag or something, and you're like, tag, you're it. And then it's like, no, you I'm not I'm not it because you, you didn't spin around three times. And when I touch this tree limb, then that means that I'm safe and that's home base. And also, I'm wearing a red shirt and I'm older than you, so then you're not allowed to touch me. Bye. And you run away. Like that scenario. This is what this sounds like. Like, like oh... The rule seems very simple. Everyone has, there's a masculine and a feminine and you uh, unite and then you ascend. That's a very simple concept. But then when these, you know, things happen and people leave and now they need, you know, there's soul families and there's a triplet and there's a whatever. It's like, they just change the rules. They just go and change the rules on you. You're like, oh yes. And she can also manifest as a masculine. Like, what are you even saying? Oh, it's so confusing. Uh, uh, it's like joining an MLM and trying to understand how you earn money. You have to get 3,000 personal volume points, and then you become a gold crown member with a jewel crown ruby star, and that means you're a vice president of the company, even though we, there's no record of you ever existing. <laughs> like, what? I'm so confused. They make it confusing on purpose, so you can't question it. I work, and I'm, like, sitting on the couch, and I'm, like, uh, kind of upset, like, she's going to need a prenup. Uh, we're probably going to end up taking care of the grandkids. Like, I don't right, know. You know. How do you... So we, <laughs> our world was expanded through um, this, thinking that, well, everyone pretty much, you know, should have their, their lives built on romance and love. Mm. Well, our child, she can't build her foundation in her life on romance and love. It's on family first. It's right? on us, family, yeah. And it's up to her to explore. And there are many, many beings um, who have a divine complement like we have a child right 
who have a more open-ended experience of romance. And uh, this is very rare, but through the law of attraction, our child will be able to attract um, as many partners as she needs to discover the right one for her. Right, she's different in that in all of eternity, she's not bound to one soul. And we were thinking about this, and, and I was like, oh, that's so horrible. Why, why would someone, why would God do that? Right. Well, God's lined us up to have the desire to have a, an eternal lover, but it's just the same, it's just another role, right? We're all what the fuck are you guys talking about? I don't think they even have a child at this point. Like, their actual child does not exist at this point when this video came out. But they're talking about it like their child's going to be special and have unlimited lovers what are you even saying i'm so grossed out all right. brothers and sisters of god so it's just another role from god yeah but we all play a different role exactly so mm -hmm. she's i call her the flux card like she <laughs> she gets uh, just different rules just <laughs> different rules you know mm -hmm. And so it's very interesting for Jeff and I because she really challenges our understanding of reality at times and of spirituality because mm -hmm. she plays by a different kind of rule book, but yet she's like, uh, she's our other twin flames. So it's still one union. So to answer Fabian's question about Gregory being a soul family, well, understand that you are two unique beings and you're not bound to each other by choice. Yes. You yeah. simply are divine beings who work really well together um, with your life purpose. And you guys got to experience that. And um, it doesn't matter what you do with that relationship. And just so you know, our relationship with Gregory is over. Gregory is someone who came to us as a student with a open heart, an open mind, and a willingness to do work, and he did it, and he got enormous results quickly. Mm -hmm. He got into union from think with his twin flame was a female from thinking he was gay and not not a long period it took him you know five oh, six God. weeks to like realize he's not actually gay something he thought most of his whole life meet his twin flame come into union with her and then fall away yeah wow who would have predicted that <laughs> oh my god oh my god that's what i said there's a lot of sexuality stuff in this that is very questionable and weird so he was gay his whole life then he comes into this online cult. Then he, they tell him that he's not gay for some reason. Gets into harmonious union with a woman and then quits. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk that would have been the outcome to this? Oh, my God. Poor Gregory. So um, our relationship with Gregory is over because he decided um, to end our relationship. He can buy our courses, though. Right. He and can still he use this. He still, he still has access to this work. If he wants to, yes. We don't... No problem but there. we're not gonna we're not we can't honor ourselves yeah no kidding because you want that money continue to work with him in this way where we invest in him and there's an active do these people even know who gregory is or are they like us being confused i think gregory and let me take a second here to because like this is this is like their free class that they're offering i guess um or they post it online so you can watch to see what the class is about but this is the third version of it and i think hold on let me copy it over there's two other ones i wonder if gregory is in a earlier version um oops oh i hate that you can't just go in and look at it really fast hold on um because i think like they said he left like yesterday or whatever in the beginning of the video so i wonder if he was in the part two because what we're watching is part three let me scroll 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 scrolling down the street do y'all get your spotify wrapped uh this week i got mine today guess who my number one person is john mayer once again <laughs> You know what my number one listen to song though of the year was? Uh, Leanne Womack's um, I Hope You Dance. <laughs> because I used to sing that in karaoke when I was like 13. My parents got me a um, karaoke machine. No, 11, when I was 11. And uh, that was like the only song programmed in there. So I know all the words. So that's why I, I don't know. I don't know why I need that sometimes just to feel like I'm smart. <laughs> Play a song you know the words to and sing it out loud. 
Um, okay, we're getting there. We're almost there. Okay, so Twin Flame Ascension School 1. So I think Gregory, I'm assuming Gregory is on this list uh, down here. So I don't know if they eventually talk to these people at some point. I guess so, yeah. So uh, one of these people is Gregory, I think. I don't know if they say the names, but... What do you think that, that uh, God meant by that? Why did God do that? Okay. That's what I want to get into, the, the conversations. Because that person's no... So that guy's still there. Oops. Ah! Did you see that? I turned my Wi-Fi off. Oopsies, oopsies. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is, like I said, this is part one. And there's different people on it than in the first one. Or in this one, part three. So it must be that one guy. Okay, but let's go back to it. Relationship here. We can yeah. scoot ahead. The benefit of Twin Flame Ascension School in the recorded sense is you don't need to develop any kind of relationship with us other than whatever you want. And you can leave that relationship and come back to it because they're products, right? This is a product that you can purchase into. But all the students you see here have a beautiful and divine relationship with us. And that's the only way that they can stay here because if they're not, they have no relationship with us, we can't help them. <laughs> we can't relate to them. Yeah. One of the things that trips up, and not very many people actually do leave Twin Flame Ascension School. The majority stay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing that trips up the few people who leave is that if you don't understand relationship and you're here to learn about relationship, we're going to role model that relationship with you. Oh. And um, we're role modeling relationship with you right now about how the appropriate way for us to treat Gregory is and the appropriate way for, you know, Fabian and Anthony from over there. It's not that. <laughs> it's not the way you're doing it. I guarantee you. ...to stand uh, is to have with Gregory. So um, it's up to you guys what you're going to do uh, about your relationship with Gregory. But just know we have no relationship with Gregory. And So this is like, we're not going to tell you what to do. But your gods and goddess right here that you look up to and love so much and worship, we have no relationship. So we're not saying to excommunicate him from the group, but we are saying um, we would prefer it, definitely, because you make, make a choice, us or him. We can't, it won't continue unless he um, comes into it on his own, but we probably won't vibrate in the same space for a very, very long time, like, you know, decades is my guess. Okay. Because he's got to come into the place, and you, this is the real crux of this piece, all of you to develop a deeper relationship with us and, and accept us as your teachers, have to come into the place within yourself that says, I'm done experiencing hell. <laughs> I am through with contrasts. Okay, let's scoot ahead. I want to see them talk to someone. I'm sick of talking about Gregory, who's not even here. Okay. So let's hear from this person. Check in with Fabia and say, you know, what do you think about all this? Do you have anything else to add or say? Is there, um, you know, how does this make you feel? Yeah, I have to say that it was quite uh, challenging for me to accept that one of my soul family members is leaving the school mm -hmm. uh, because I really like him and I really love him. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a great connection and we learned so much together, right? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, man, they really did a smear campaign against Greg, for sure. Okay, let's see. Can we talk about anything else? Feel this. Let me just feel what's really taking place. And yeah, on so many levels, um, like you had mentioned, um, there's a real lack of love for self there. Um, for myself. Yeah, a choice. A choice to to um, to not love himself. Exactly. And for myself, you know. I need to choose loving me and and being one with God. And um, the result of, of Greg leaving the school, you know, I wasn't sure how it was going to make me feel. Give Greg a break. My God, he was a he was a paying customer and he left the, the company that he was paying for. He wasn't even a, like a person working. It was a, he was paying. Leave this dude alone. It's been 40 minutes. I'm skipping ahead again. We moved on. Okay, finally. So I want to check in with Lorraine. I, I think if I understand correctly, Lorraine, you got to see your twin flame recently? Yes. Tell us what happened. 
Well, I decided to, um, I finally found a place within myself to say I'm ready to go take the next step to say what I have to say, where I feel mm -hmm. like we'll just, um, just where we left off, I just wanted to say a few things to him because it, it, we didn't leave it clear before. I didn't leave it clear with myself. So I want, I felt the need to go uh, say what I had to say to him. And I, I wanted to bring it to a place of friendship because the past couple of times that when I was going to see him, I was looking for his confirmation and that doesn't work. And I realized, you know, that has to come from myself. So this time I just went to him and I just was like, I'm just going to be myself and just let it happen just the way it did when we first met. And it kind of unfolded beautifully from there. Like I just said, let's just agree that we are twin flames. We know who we are. We understand it. And then I just took it from a place where I've just allowed myself to be me. And he reflected that back at me. There's still sometimes I get like a little nervous because I feel like a twin flame, as beautiful as it is, it makes me like a little uneasy at times. Like I have to just remember like, you know, this is me, like just relax. And then I just went to that place of love in my heart and I spoke to him. And he just, he answered me back. He said, um, just trust in the universe. And it'll all work out and I really felt like it was just God talking to me I felt like it wasn't even me or my it was just like God coming through him and I was like no you're right like I I already know this but I just want to go see his face it was just it was a beautiful moment yeah it's absolutely beautiful so what else happened I was arrested and sentenced for showing up at his house <laughs> I just brought up a few things with him. I said, instead of us, every time I would see him, I know it's me. I just would be like a little nervous because we haven't seen each other in a long time. It's a great to just be at ease and just enjoy seeing, uh, seeing each other and just keep like an open friendship, just an openness. We, we have a, we're bonded. You know, I kind of teased him. I'm like, you're stuck with me internally. So like you better just get used to me being around. And he just laughed. And then I just brought up a lot of the issues, uh, not issues, some of the beautiful moments that we had enjoyed together because we, we play around a lot with each other when um, we're relaxed. And I just brought up all of the times that, uh, like I remembered being in that easy, playful, kind of sexy place where it was just beautiful. So I said, I'm just going to do that and see what happens. And it just works. He just like melted. And I'm like, that. Ah! That's him. That's who I fell in love with. And it was just so beautiful. And this is the way he said it. But he's like, just let the universe handle it. It'll just all work out. I was like, it just is. And I knew it. And I was like, oh, I got this. Like, and I just, I love seeing how the reflection works and mirroring. And I have to get used to, like, when I speak to him, like, the, like I have to like understand it's like the reflection and just be in that moment. It's a quite a learning experience for me. But otherwise, I just am really excited to move forward and just being me and allowing it to happen and let you know that God do the rest of the work because I really have come to a complete finally understanding of how all this works. And I feel very peaceful. And I just love him so much, but he got so skinny. <laughs> and I know that was something about me because I really was, you know, exhausted from all my upheaval and everything that I put myself through. And now it's time to let love in and let it just all unfold beautifully. And I feel like it just will. I'm going to go see him one more time, a few more times. There's a few more things I want to say. And then... I just, I mean... Is he inviting you, or are you taking this upon yourself? I don't know how, but I know the wow is going to come. You know, uh, Lorraine, you're just, you're such a beautiful example of what it really means to surrender control as you come into your union. Mm -hmm.
and your harmonious union. This is the exact same thing that I came yeah. to um, surrendering control um, once I got done with my false twin flame. Mm -hmm. That was my final surrender. I was like, <laughs> can't do shit. There goes my control. Yeah. I got nothing. I can't right. do it at all. I, I know I can't do it. I'm a really talented doer. I do talented. stuff. I get stuff done. And mm -hmm. I can't do this one. He's so talented. I can't do this one. I mean, mm -hmm. I had to surrender all control. And mm -hmm. Lorraine, you've done it and you're doing it. Now, don't be surprised if this continues to get reinforced in your reality so that the universe is reminding you, you know, and keeping you in that uh, astuteness, that mastery of mm -hmm. surrender. But also don't be surprised that new steps unfold for you now that you've surrendered control. So you, you're saying it beautifully. You're saying, I, I just got a few more times, you know, of going to see him and a, just a couple more things to say. Well, great. It seems like you're in a really good groove and you know, you know, what you need to do next. You know the action you need to take next because you're really describing inspired divine action. You're describing what it's like to love and move forward with that love. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely I need the context here. I need to know. This seems like I'm going to go see him and tell him a few things. It's like, this, this, this guy doesn't seem like he's your boyfriend. What kind of relationship are you developing here in reality? Like, I feel like this is a one-sided weird thing. He's like, just let it be. Okay. The universe will take care of it. Relax. Whatever is supposed to happen in your life will happen. But she's like, oh, it's happening. And they're encouraging it. Like, keep stalking him. Keep showing up. It's like, I mean, they're not, she's not saying that it's a stalking scenario yet but it doesn't sound like a relationship to me beautiful what you're doing and how you're doing it. i know you posted the story in the group you know maybe yesterday or today mm -hmm. and i was just like all caps like this is how it's done <laughs> lorraine <laughs> is doing it she yeah. is revealing what it's like to let go of control mm. oh. sorry i like tried to conceal a yawn that... oh i thought you had something to say <laughs> no. you're like oh yeah <laughs> I sometimes I started yawning in this class sometimes, not because I'm like bored or tired. It's just the way to release. It's how I process and yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna get a little like handkerchief and <laughs> cover my, have like a smile on the <laughs> oh, <I'm releasing. laughs> oh you're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I like hardly ever yawn, but when I jump on camera, anyways. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Let's go back. Yeah, so, Lorraine. <laughs> Am I boring you? <laughs> no, I said it has nothing to do with that. It's, uh, it's quite the opposite, it's actually. It's about um, taking in uh, oxygen into the brain, more oxygen into the brain, and because I'm, I'm working a lot spiritually, I need oxygen, more oxygen. <laughs> Only a true manipulator would yawn and then say no actually i'm more i'm paying attention to you even more than the average person i need more oxygen in my brain to fuel me to listen to you better oh good story good story yeah i just need to get more oxygen up there I need more oxygen in the brain so i can hear what the fuck you're talking about <laughs> i'm just calling in more light that's all yes yeah yeah that's what it means <laughs> For sure. um, oftentimes you'll see people yawn it's boring because they're calling in more light because the situation that they're in is not filling them yeah. with light but it's the opposite with Shalia where she's yawning to bring in more light because because <laughs> um, you brought in more light into our reality by your choice Lorraine of, of, of loving and surrendering control mm -hmm. and sharing your story yeah totally yeah. next I just, I just oh. know that people who didn't know what a twin flame was God revealed him to me and I had to say to myself, why would God even present such a beautiful gift for me if he didn't want me to have it? And yeah. I, as I came to the place of really understanding um, the beautiful dynamic of what this truly is, I just said to myself, okay, it's okay what happened. You just have to accept that you didn't understand and it's okay. So now, you know, like allow it and just trust, like, this is how this works. And I was just like, just love him. Just go to that place where you just, it worked. And I feel like the universe, I really felt like God was just with me, with him speaking to me from him. And I was like, this is just, just incredible. And I'm so excited for old. And I just want to tell Mark to his face, 
um, so I just want to make it clear that I how much I love him because I didn't back then. I was so running away from it and I was so blocking it that I don't think I ever made it clear to him how beautiful and brilliant he really is. I want him to know that before I just say here go universe and whatever is to come. I'm just completely allowing and just so overwhelmed with how much love there really is. Um, just, just keeps getting more beautiful every single day. And what really touches my heart is people just come to me like, you're so inspiring. Like, it's just it's amazing all day. I'm like, this is just, it's so beautiful. And I just thank God every day for the two of you, for Twin Flame Ascension School. Mm. And Twin Flame, God, and this universe and all these beautiful people here. And the rest, I can't wait to ah. see what's going to come. I'm very excited. <laughs> Well, it seems like she said, I told him and he didn't want to hear it about them being twin flames. So don't think it's working. I think a lot of people, (laughs) (laughs) I think a lot of people really need to hear your story, Lorraine, because, you know, not a lot of people will um, come to the place that you're at. They don't have very many role models for the next step. And Mm -hmm. you're one of them. So many people are, you know, they love the twin flame, but it doesn't work out and they don't know how to move forward. And they're doing the mirror exercise, but, and they're moving forward. But it's really brilliant to see you, Lorraine, um, having arrived there, mm-hmm. having made real progress in your heart and in your life experience and in your spiritual mastery to come to this point. And it takes effort. It takes work. You've been with us for quite some time and you've been at it. You've been working spiritually. You've been dissolving your illusions. You've been healing your heart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've been calling in and choosing love. Mm. And every step of the way that you move forward, you know, life gets better. Mm. You discover more love. You're discovering a natural and this amazing conversation between you and God in your experience with your twin flame. Well, guess what? That's how life is. This very mystical experience is very commonplace for us mm-hmm. and will be for you too and everyone. Because this is the truth of the universe, right? is that it's just you and God yeah. and everything God created for you. Okay. All these wonderful people, <laughs> this wonderful, perfect love of loves for you. Right? Yeah. Next. So do you have any, uh, any words of, of wisdom for people, you know, maybe just starting out on their journey or who met their twin flame and they just it can't seem to get it to work out no matter how hard they try? What, would you, what advice do you have for those people? Stalk them. You just have to come to a place of, of peace with yourself first. You have to say that, you know, it's okay where I'm at and who I am. And just allow that and understand, um, you know, I matter. I value. I'm a value. I, I, and there's a purpose why I'm here. And God does love me. And you can come from that place of Okay, Perfect. enough of her. I'm done with Lorraine. Sorry. Moving on. And vice versa. This is yeah, my, I'm going to claim him every day. This That's is fun. my woman. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. Mm-hmm. Don't make yeah. me cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it never, oh, it never ends. Good, then. It never ends. You always, you always claim your partner. Every day. Every day. Every instant. It never ends. Oh, you always yeah. claim you're good. Mm-hmm. You always okay. claim what's yours. You never stop. Never stop. No matter how close or far Shalia is, I'm going to claim her constantly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And every day we claim our other twin, our child, you know, we claim grace. (laughs) Every day that we give our gift is a day of claiming our twin flame. So that we can bring her into a world that's, um, that sits well with us. Mm. Bring her into a reality that sits well with us. Huh. And have her in a, in a space yeah. that sits well with us, right? Every day we claim her, yeah. even though she's not here yet. Uh-huh. She'll come. So beautiful. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. it's so beautiful. I can't. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I can't wait to meet her. Yeah, me yeah, too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh, what's that going to be really? like? <laughs> they do have a baby now. By the way, this is like several years ago. 
this video came out. So they've been manifesting the baby, but I think they did IVF and things. So they were manifesting while also seeking traditional medical care, <laughs> which is fine. But it's like, if all this universe shit worked, I don't think you would need anything. You would just go in the woods and immaculate conceive, immaculately conceive, and then boom, done. You would, why even bother with all, like, you don't need the help of doctors. So like if you, manifestation was really real. That's going to be wonderful. We know yeah. yeah. Okay, get ready for your life to change. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Definitely. Right. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank well, you. Then, thank you. You're welcome. I love you guys. We, we love, love you too. too. Thank you. Okay, next. Who's up next? Good. Very nice. Well, Andrea, is that your hand up? Because it's your turn to talk now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. <laughs> I'm joking about the hand up thing. It was your turn to talk There's anyway. Involuntary. Uh, it wasn't because uh, you had your hand in a certain way, you know. Uh -huh. It was just God called us to uh, reach out to you, and I think we uh, we you know connected with you last week. We just want to reconnect with you and see what, what's going on in your twin flame journey. Are you um, enjoying and at peace with the friendship that you're growing with your twin flame now? I'm uh, actually. Um... That's actually one thing I've been uh, working with uh, since last week is just really being comfortable um, with just like in the in the friend stage, um, just really coming to to peace with that. Um, it's like it I, like I like it. I've been enjoying it. Um, this past week or since the last time we've talked, like um, she's been just becoming just extremely more open and um, expressing herself. Um, more than usual so it's still an opening and uh still like an adventure still learning um, which is really cool so you're noticing immediately better results from just accepting that you're friends and developing your friendship mm -hmm. yeah like it like pr like big results like <laughs> you want to share with us what that what do you mean by big results um just uh I think I shared the poem in the in the school um, that she wrote me, um, and uh, just her expressing a little bit more of herself. Um, she we like to express ourselves like through music and videos and stuff like that. So she's been sending me a lot of um, very like heartfelt videos um, that she's found and like been like really cool and um, is able to kind of see a, a little bit more into what she's into and stuff like that. So you show her your YouTube channel yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprise face, though. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Cool. Yeah, I'm sure you're good. I don't remember if she was in the documentary. I feel like I'm just trying to look it up now, but I don't see her listed anywhere. But she could be. I don't remember. There at some point. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Mm -hmm. Just curious. <laughs> She can read your diary though, anytime. Yeah. <laughs> it's out there. No. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. Good. But I like your videos, you know. I like your channel. I like. Uh, I didn't know you've been doing it for a while, you little fox. It's. I didn't know. I know you. I just can just popped right up next to one of my videos. I'm like, oh, who who is that? is that? Andrea? That is Andrea. I recognize that face anywhere. <laughs> the room. And I click on it. I'm like, oh, it's actually good shit. I'm like, thank God. I mean, you know, I I confidence, but like, I wasn't sure. I'm like. I don't know. This is like not a. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not bad. <laughs> We're just so used to but seeing no, crap. I'm like, oh. Well, speaking of this person, Andrea, I'm pretty sure this is the same person. Um, in three days, so if you want to get a uh, hot piping tea, in three days on a pot or a I don't know YouTube channel called the Josh and Artemis Show. Uh, she'll be speaking. Former Twin Flames mem Universe member speaks out. Andrea escaped the Twin Flames Universe cult, and we chat with her about her experience. So I guess she was on the Netflix one. Um, I don't know what her channel is. I don't know her last name, but yeah, interesting. So this is her before. Is this it? No, different person. Um, so there you go. So she'll be speaking in three days.
and there's no link to her channel. Hmm. So things have changed since this video from 2019 that we're watching currently. This is cool. This <laughs> 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 is not brain dead. It's yeah, man. <laughs> So yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. I I definitely recommend your channel. I like uh, your approach of just sharing your story, you know, sharing your journey. Because you're right, most videos are informational uh, that are out there on the topic of twin flames. But yours is really just about being honest and and sharing, mm -hmm. you know, where you're at and what you're thinking, what you're learning, what's going on within, mm -hmm. you know. And I think yeah, a lot of people. I mean, our brains are really wired to understand through stories. That's why Jesus always taught in parables. And it actually has to do with the way our, our brains are wired. Mm. Our, um, I think it's our reptilian brain in the back of our head here is, uh, you know, learned first through stories, you know, way back when we were first developing. And that's why this class is so essential right. to your teaching because you're going to see the stories of all these students unfold over time in the microcosms in the macrocosms in the big it sounds like a lot of uh, unrequited love stories <laughs> that's what i'm learning that's the story that's being told to me unrequited love uh from everyone in this group until they get with someone that's in the group then all of a sudden it's okay then they figured it out big big macrocosm right. through their whole journey and you're gonna see you know um us take them all the way through step by step all the time yeah that was geeking out wasn't i <laughs> I just saw a really good opportunity. Oh, I saw to show, opening. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, if you don't have anywhere else to continue, I'm okay. excited. So, yeah. I want to, um, Andrea, are you? So, you say you're in the friend zone, but um, is it? Okay, let's so we'll talk about something here. Uh -oh. So, a lot of people find the friend zone to be inauthentic because they're just trying to be friends uh. to get something from them, and when they realize it's not going to happen. They go somewhere else. Or they go get what they want from somewhere else, and they're done with the friend, right? Is that what you're doing right now? Are you just trying to get something? Or do you feel good that you have a real friend and you're developing a real friendship? No, it feels really good that I'm, like, developing a friendship. Like, to be honest, like, if it, like, was, like, a typical, like, friend zone type ordeal, I'd probably, like, dip <laughs> all the time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I wake up, it's not working. Okay. <laughs> right, right. So you're not, you know, friend zoning to get something. Instead, you have something you really enjoy and appreciate. Yeah. Like, we share a lot. We share art, share music, um, poetry, of course. Like, just yeah. really being open and expressive. It's like, how is this your twin flame, though? If you just, you're just developing a friendship now. How did you know this person previously? You have no relationship with this person and you're like, this is my soulmate? That's a little weird. That's beautiful. I like that. So I just want to encourage you to keep going in that direction. Keep developing that. Keep unfolding that friendship. Because now that you're finally um, surrendering to that peace, well, you made it to the next level and you can grow into this. So enjoy your expanded friendship. Mm -hmm. You're in a place that many other students, even in this class in school, haven't achieved yet. You actually have a real working friendship relationship with mm -hmm. your twin flame, not just a spiritual relationship where they're over there and you're over here and they're like, do your spiritual work and then you can meet, we can meet. Instead, you actually get to relate to them and that's beautiful and you should really cherish that privilege mm -hmm. of having that friendship because even though this is your eternal divine compliment, it's a huge, exquisite privilege to be around them. I think it's um it's a beautiful love story, but it's not a love story that's necessarily popular. The you know we were friends first, and then we slowly started to fall in love. Um, but that's that's what's really real. That's where the real depth is. It isn't like the fast and furious you know hot zone. Mm -hmm. It's when it's really um when the temperature is really kind of warm. Uh, to cool, cool, warm, and then you build up into the hot because you actually mm -hmm. have a... Except in their case, they told their twin flame love story that they knew immediately that it was love and they had to run back to the house to consummate their, you know, relationship and they just knew instantly the gods opened the skies and said, you are meant to be, and then they were attached to the hip ever since. They've had no problems. <laughs> So in their case, unrelatable to this story, but in her case, yeah, slow burn, friends first, totally. A real foundation, and 
you know, like Jeff and I, I mean, we were, we were like friends for probably like a month before a month. he popped the question of we would be my girlfriend. But I mean, I, we, we, we friend zoned hard. I mean, we were talking for hours every day. Like that was our life was work. And then talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. There was, like, no room for anything else except when I'd go to uh, my spiritual teacher and I'd go to uh, Unity Church. That mm -hmm. was it. But, uh, I mean, that's the best love story ever is, like, when you have a real friendship, authentic friendship, and then you start to fall in love with each other. I mean, it's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good. I'm, I'm glad to hear. Yeah. yeah it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um... Do you have any questions about where you are, Andrea? Or do you have any uh, words of wisdom for people who want to uh, get to where you are? <clears throat> Being friend zoned. Um, just as far as like uh, advice, like, like just really like enjoy the journey. Like, I mean, don't force it. Uh, like, just kind of go with the flow, <laughs> pretty mm. much. Yeah. Um, one of my uh, biggest issues um, earlier on was like learning how to actually like just let go of control, like to the point where it's like eh, and nothing I can do so <laughs> so but um yeah like you just let go and and like gotta take it and you know things work out way better <laughs> yeah it's beautiful yeah. and just it goes right with what Lorraine was saying it's just like you know you guys are saying the same thing essentially in your own way seems like everyone that's a student does not have a twin flame for the most part except for Gregory who left <laughs> So far, the two people who have spoken are friend zoned or barely, you know, they're like, oh, I'm going to talk to this, my twin flame. Like, they're not actually dating each other at this point, doesn't seem like. So what are they giving advice about? Like, I'm slowly chipping away at their self-worth so that one day they'll come around. It's like, oh, okay. About surrendering control and, and letting God take care of it, so... You know, there must be something to this. And I think uh, when we find out that someone is our twin flame, uh, there's like a lot of pressure right there automatically, like to get together and, and be romantic and partner up. But like Jeff and I have been saying for a while, it's actually the opposite. You're meant mm -hmm. to just take it easy and be friends and then go from there, you know, part to partnership mm -hmm. and then to romantic union. Friends, you build on that. then partners then lovers. That's how a sustainable relationship is built. And Andrea yeah. is building a very solid, sustainable relationship with her twin flame. A lot of people want to, you know, feel like, oh, we got to have this sort of image. And then once we get into this place, then we can develop our relationship. But a lot of people are experiencing contrast there because you can't build a real relationship using an old relationship pattern that doesn't work for this. I know Fabian's twin flame has told him several times that she's she just can't wrap her mind around having a, a framework for their relationship or a, a label for it, but instead that, you know, let it be what it is and unfold it as it is. Natural. Find, you know, the place where the relating happens naturally and relax into that space and discover and explore and find out what is here for us. What is here for me? What is here for you? How do we actually relate? And I try this, and we're not really relating over there. I wanted to relate there, but I didn't didn't actually work out the way I had hoped. Mm -hmm. But I don't realize it when I'm passing through from here to there. There's some relating, so I just remember. Okay, we experience real relationship. Now you're losing me. <laughs> here we go to the word salad, like here to there and go over there and relating and relationshiping. It's like, oh, you've lost the thread. Here, like Andrea with her friendship with Mo, dive in. Don't be scared. And don't have control over what you think that's... If someone went to a class, like, if someone was, like, trying to hit on me or, like, in my past, like, they liked me or we were dating and then it wasn't working out and they were going weekly to a class to talk about me publicly in a group, I would... I would... I don't know what I would do. <laughs> I would be so embarrassed. Like, oh, my God. I just want my own space. Please stop this. Stop getting support, group support about our relationship that doesn't exist. Supposed to unfold into, or whether you think that this is going to lead to what you want, doesn't matter. You don't control whether this leads to what you want. You only control your choice to get what you want and to move forward. Right. And you take the opportunities that arise before you. You don't say, oh. This opportunity is not good for me. 
I will pass. I will wait for the good opportunity. No. You see the opportunity. Didn't quite land. I'll claim it. I have a little in. Let's do that. This is what I really want. I really want to make love to you and have babies and be with you forever. But you want to have tea? Okay, we'll have tea. You don't want to talk about relationship? You want to talk about Aerosmith, the band? Okay, we talk about Aerosmith, the band. I don't like Aerosmith. I think Steven Tyler's a drug addict. I love Aerosmith. He's this is so fabulous. Steven Tyler's such a great artist. Whatever. Who cares? You're relating. Oh my god, what a privilege. What a privilege it is to know your twin flame. What a privilege it is to have any contact whatsoever. What a privilege it is for the opportunity to communicate something to them that there's a possibility they might even glance at a piece of it. What a privilege. What a high privilege. What an honor. What an exquisite honor this is. What a I think this creates a level of worship in a relationship too that's very unhealthy. Like if you're so obsessed with somebody and they just do not have the same feelings of worship towards you, it's a it's a high you know mountain to climb to get that other person to love you as much as you're obsessing over them. And I feel like this comes from probably trauma in some way. Like um, there's a lot of I don't know, I don't know, studies or whatever, but there's a lot of like <clears throat> anecdotal stories about people who get into these like very toxic relationships because they had a toxic upbringing or they think that love, and I can kind of relate to this a lot, like love is like chaos and you know, whatever. And so you're attracted to something like this where like the challenge is so great, just like with your family of origin, you know, in the sense of like your parents are not there and you got to like you know, get them to love you or gain your love. Yeah, you know, I watch a lot of videos about parent and love and issues and stuff. So um, I feel like, yeah, like it's not, this is not the way to go about it healthily. Like a lot of the stuff is about you, you know, like you in a relationship, a lot of the problems that come up probably are something that you are doing or projecting or thinking, especially if you're not actually dating them. You know, if you're like sitting here talking about somebody and trying to be their twin flame and that's already a red flag. So there's already something wrong that you're in a class to try to force a person that's not interested to be with you. Okay. You got to do some work on yourself first with a, like either on your own. And if you're really, you know, mentally stable in every other department, like just take it a step back or go see somebody and talk to them about your feelings and try to work it through. But this thing, it just, it just like takes the trauma of probably what's actually going on. And like, it's coming out as a projection of you're obsessed with this person that's not even into you and, and normalizing it and actually um, supporting it and pushing it and saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. The solution here is to force it so hard that then you'll be happy as opposed to, you know, it's just a symptom of a bigger problem most likely in your life. High privilege to be friends. What a high privilege for the opportunity <laughs> to say something to them because most people don't even have that opportunity. And they know what a privilege you have. And once you come into harmonious union, you'll know what a privilege you have because you had the contrast and you said, mm. fuck it all, I'm taking the blue pill. <laughs> Bye-bye, Matrix. Peace out. Okay. <laughs> She's like, stop. Hope I don't have to blur that out. You're not going to blur that shit out. That's <laughs> golden. <laughs> All right. <laughs> People will know, I guess, anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Very good. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So thanks for that, Andrea. Next. No problem. Thank good. you. Who's next, Shalia? You pick. You so this is the this is what this amazing class is. It's getting in a group, and each sharing the stage of delusion you're currently in, <laughs> and them saying like, "Yep, great, love it." Pick them. Oh, I feel I don't know. Uh, pick one. Whose uh, turn is it? I don't know. <laughs> you pick. You pick. You're good at this. It's a job. Who who wants to go? Are Maybe it's Jason. Jason Hello? will oh! not be forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. People were making comments about that, about how inspired they were that you were forgotten and that you claimed yeah, your spot. Yeah, that's right. I, I saw that comment. It was very sweet. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. 
So what are you thinking about today's class so far? What what have you really gotten from it? What were you teaching? Gregory sucks? Um, I mean, you know, everybody's story is, is uh, in its own way, is just so beautiful and moving. You know, we, we draw inspiration from each other. And uh, the, the one thing that I do... Um, think that the the focus has been on is that and to all the people you know watching from subscription land is like literally never give up there's no reason to give up whatsoever mm. i yeah, don't agree yeah, i like that it's so true if what the person is that, not though? consenting give up oh uh, well you know like you said you know uh there are times along this journey where it's it's kind of unbearable you know it's things get tough um and it's you know it's it's really about picking yourself up and just taking that first step you know just not quitting you know you just refusing to quit because what is there to go back to Ugh. there's nothing to go back to jesus christ it's really the truth that is bleak. That is what you say before you murder, murder suicide. My God, like you have to love me. There's nothing left for me. That is not a good path to be down. I mean, I think I think with therapy, and you know, I don't know. I hate to say that, like you know, woo. -woo. Not even it's not woo woo. I'm like with therapy, anything's possible. But you know, with help, with with mental health care with good mental health care you can get off of that and you know see clearly i think but when you start on the path like this and start thinking this way and going there's nothing left for me if this person doesn't love me and you got two cult leaders pushing you on that is scary that is extremely scary for whoever he is pursuing or was pursuing several years ago that's freaky yeah. what you couldn't go back to is literally nothing you go yeah. back to illusion, to nothingness, to ego, to insanity. Like, what's the point? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So how do you uh, keep moving forward and never give up? Do you have any tips for how to, how to do that when you're at your worst? When it's at the hardest? When you're a, a mopey puddle on the floor, can't move? Um, I, it's really just about focus... What do you mean beyond that? Just focus, you said. I think he froze. He frozed. My goal to be one with myself and one with God. Um, can you hear me? We lost you for a sec. So you said focus, <laughs> and then we didn't hear anything after that. So you said it's just focus, and then you know, we lost you. Oh. Um, Um, yeah, I mean, it's, did you lose me? Oh, we, uh, we're mining, muting our microphone so that you can speak as clearly as possible. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, it's, uh, I just think that, you know, there's, there's no way to, to give up on yourself. Like, you know, it's. Like why? Why would you do that? What? What? <laughs> I don't. I don't really see a reason there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awkward. So is it just that you see that there's no reason to give up on yourself? Um, you know, in these really difficult moments, that causes you to just keep moving forward. Uh, yeah. I mean. You know, there's there's a dimension of faith to it that uh, everything is is going to work out, and um, you know that plays in the background while you're uh, you know having a bad time or whatever you want to call it. But uh, everyone's miserable in this group. You know, I just don't. You know, I I don't see how. Um, 
just some pain or just some upheaval or whatever could could ever derail your journey you know it's it's like all steam you know all systems go like full steam ahead type of thing nice. you know there's there's uh like i said there's nothing to go back to so don't Yikes. look back yeah right. it's absolutely beautiful yeah i think uh, oh, a terrifying. lot of people they think that the pain is a result of doing the work or of jeff and i or in the school <laughs> Uh, that's causing it, but that pain was already deep inside of them, mm -hmm. and it was just coming to the surface to be cleared, so that you don't have to experience that pain and upset anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole giving up on themselves part mm -hmm. of thinking, oh, you know, it it must be them, it must be this, you know. I joined but, Ascension School, and now suddenly I'm experiencing all these upsets yeah, or whatever it is. But if you just look at it logically, well, like no. That I think they were alluding to Gregory there again, but can you imagine though, it, like the, if you were if you were identified as one gender or one sexuality, and then you join this online cult, I mean online group, okay, and then um, now they're suggesting or pressuring you to change that gender or change your sexuality, yeah, that would sort of mean like, ooh, maybe that is causing the upset instead of, you know, all my other problems. Maybe that is like taking it to a new level of upset. <laughs> I think two things can be true at once. You can have pain, you can it could force you or, you know, persuade you to join something like this that is, you know, wacky. But also it that itself could make you worse and cause the problems that make you quit and that be justified. Well, the pain is already in, deep inside of you and has right. nothing to do with any anyone or anything outside of you mm -hmm. um it's just when you make new choices um from love that new level of loving um brings up the old choices to be of not in alignment with loving to be cleared that's all that upset is but it's because of the choice that you made not because you know someone did something said something whatever yeah mm -hmm. totally right yeah it's absolutely beautiful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also uh, something I, I wasn't, I'm not sure if Jeff said it yesterday, um, but you know, when, when you reach different levels, you know, there's that, there's a little bit of pushback of, you know, are you real? do you really want to go through this door? And, you know, fuck yeah, I do. Like, absolutely. Yeah, for nice. sure. Nice. I love that enthusiasm. We're yeah, the same and you way. Really, you know, I'm scared. The, the students here today are piecing together a mindset. Yeah. And as Shalia was saying, like, you know, the reptilian part of our brains understands stories. We understand vibration. We understand attitude. We understand all of these things that... No one has told a story. Everyone has vaguely mentioned who, like, weirdly, cryptically, what's going on with their lover. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the end. Let's skip over. Let's see what let's see what this chick's got to say. And he's gonna be done and he's gonna be like, I put in a shitload of effort to get here. I do it a thousand times over to get here. I do it a thousand million times. This is very interesting to me though. To get the same result. Because that's how worth it it is. I would pay any price to have love. Mm. And you will. You will pay any price to get love back. And that price is never give up, choose love. And, um, you know, give love too. And choosing to give love, you're gonna be inspired to give love in ways that feel suitable for you. Like Lorraine was feeling inspired to go see her twin flame after some time where Fabian feels rarely inspired to reach out to his twin flame, right? Or Andrea feels inspired all the day, every day to reach out and connect with her twin flame, right? So you follow that inspiration wherever it leads you. So we're coming to wrap up this class. I want to hear from Anastasia, your thoughts on today's lessons and today's class and, you know, uh, anything that you want to say, because we don't hear too much from you. We haven't heard too much. What was the class? What was the lesson? The lesson was somebody left the group. We hate him. We have no relationship with him. Do what you want, but he's a jerk. And we have no, you know, we did not cause any problems. And then they said, so what's up? How is your twin flame? Okay, cool. And they went around the group and they're like, what have you learned from class? What, what were you teaching? <laughs> from you yet. I'm certain we'll hear more from you in the uh, recorded, you know, in subscription land as Jason was calling it. <laughs> what do you think about today's class? Subscription land. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
love it the, because it really is about, you know, giving up your control. And I have some advice I'd like to say that I didn't hear. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I would say don't make it harder than it is because um, – as you guys know, I've been making it so fucking hard, and I realized this past week that I was thinking that it was hard, so it was making it hard. So I was, I like, I was like, no, this isn't hard. This is easy. Like, how, what is hard about loving yourself? Like, nothing, nothing at all. You know, Anastasia, I think I hear that from you just about every time you talk. You're like, I just had this epiphany this week about this huge thing, and I was doing this awful thing before, and now I've got this totally new, delightful perspective on life. It's the Rachel Hollis effect. I don't want to say I admire that so much in you. And so many of you have the same experience as Anastasia, where you have, this huge, you have these huge epiphanies, and some of you don't even see them as huge anymore because they happen all day, every day. Mm. One of the other things I want to show you um, because this is the last opportunity. It's the last kind of thing that we're going to say when we wrap up class. Um, one of the things we're going to show you throughout all of this is what it's like when someone is loved immeasurably mm. by us and by our teaching. What happens to each of these students from here? And you're already seeing many of them in very advanced places. Very advanced places indeed. The stuff that's coming out of their mouth right now was not coming out of their mouth the first time we spoke. <laughs> and it's not because they're parrots and they're like, whatever Jeff and Julia say, we say back. It makes us look smart. <laughs> that's definitely what's happening. <laughs> it's indoctrination at its finest. You learn the keywords and you start to just repeat it because you want to get the praise and affection of the leaders. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't what happened. If you have any understanding of people whatsoever, you know this is authentic from each of their yeah. mouths. You do this every week. It's really fucking stupid, but we love it because that means you're paying us every week. Never leave. Yeah. Each of these people has developed a certain level and degree of mastery, and we assure you, we ain't even close to done yet. We got a lot more to give them and to give you, and you're going to see these students transform from where they are now to where they desire to be. Let's and you're going to see their their experience of life, their state of I'm being, it more their light. expressions, everything about them is going to transform and evolve and grow. And you might see some of it now in them as we see it. You might see the grand masters that sit before us. You might not. Yeah. But you will see them transform into a much more expanded version of themselves through this. And you'll see each of them if they don't give up. Don't Come into harmonious up. union. I'm gonna let I promise. You down. All that we are, harmonious union is the natural result of this work. And then everyone gets cake and champagne. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and then a yeah, rest Maybe we'll do that whenever, when everyone graduates. It's have just a little... me eating cake in front of the camera. <laughs> this one's for you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe we'll have a little reunion party when, with everyone's twin flame, you know, at the, uh, at the, as the, like the very last class or something. Mm. All the original students and their harmonious twin flame unions all together in the same space for a yeah. nice party with cake and champagne. <laughs> That'd be fun. You know that's fun. It's fun, sure. It's fun. Sure. It'd, it'd be real fun. <laughs> so. Seems like no. If this is our last time seeing you, and we very much hope it's not. Because I moving forward should be very affordable for you and especially valuable for what you get for what you're investing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Considerably worth the money. What price can you put on your ultimate love? Hmm. What price? Apparently $3,000. $3,300 because that's what you're charging people. Um, okay. Wow. That was an interesting. Can you in put ah! on your soul's divine ascension? What price? That was quite interesting. We also have free life purpose class. And Shalia's got blue lipstick on. Um, we have that one or we have... Wait, we got another one too. This one. Twin flame... 
exploiting them illegally. This pregnant scientist is I think this is him trying to get people to join to volunteer for him. Uh, cult leader exploiting. You can only be with your twin flame if I control you. You can only be your twin flame on my terms. You can only be with your twin flame, but only on our terms. Let's do let's do a life purpose class. How about that? I like hearing the feedback. When it's just them two talking, it's like very boring, but at least they get we get some insight. Let's do unless we want to do twin flame ascension school too. Hmm, poor Gregory's in this class, I think. This is before he gave up. Welcome to our second class for Twin Flame Ascension School. Maybe we learned something The purpose else. of this class is to assist you and all the students into their harmonious union. This is a free recording, so please join us in free enjoyment of the entire 90-minute class. The first three classes are recorded <gasps> for free. Oh! And every class beyond this one, um, there's a paid subscription. Check out the, lo the links in the box below if you want to learn more about going deeper with this class. So lately we've been starting classes with a little meditation and uh, oh, it's been really beautiful to start class Skip. because there are all these different people and all these different energies coming together and um, these students, you know, it's, they see me week after week, but lots changes in the, you know, weeks in the in-between. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take this opportunity just to invite everyone to relax. No. Even if it's good, let it go. But now is the time that we take out of each week. I made a choice to help all of you into harmonious union. And these students you see before you all made a choice to get into harmonious union. They'll be here. You'll see them, each one of them, come into harmonious union. Mm. And if you don't, it's because <laughs> they either left or they're not quite yet there yet. And we're going to be with them there until the end of their journey. <laughs> Every journey has a beginning and an end. It, you're guaranteed to come into union with your harmon or your harmonious union with your twin flame, unless you leave or it doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, okay. Existence Good. doesn't. Life doesn't. Life always was and always will be. Had no beginning, has no end. But your journey has a beginning and an end. Your twin flame journey has a clear beginning and an end. Uh -huh. And I just invite all of you to Jail. Um, remind yourselves or reinforce that choice you made to come into harmonious union. Mm -hmm. Just go into that place in your heart and remember, I choose to be in harmonious union with my true twin flame. And if this is the first time you've come into contact with this choice, make it now. Because this is the true beginning of your twin flame journey. And it's a beautiful journey. And some people have a very short twin flame journey. Some people have a longer, more drown out twin flame journey. But your twin flame journey is perfect for you. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to meet some of the students in a little more depth. And we're going to discuss their twin flame journeys. And we hope to you know, help everyone. Let's do it. At home. We need... Not in this class, right? You're all at home, probably. Except for Gregory, he's out in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Gregory. Gregory, this is, so I went behind, like, this is part two. This is the second class, then the third class was what we just watched. So Gregory was accepted here. He will be not accepted very soon. So we're going to help you all in the harmonious union and give everything we've got. And we know that... Uh, all you do is make a choice and never give up, and you will arrive at the end result. The end result is beautiful, and it's worth the journey. Mm -hmm. And the journey is beautiful. Even if it doesn't seem that way right now, it is beautiful. You look back upon it ten years later and say, that was so wonderful. Even though I, I didn't quite like pieces of it as I was going, I really like it now. I'm really happy with, with what I had to go through. It was 100% definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. And there will be challenges we're going to see them through together. We have this community called Twin Flame Ascension School. So let's get started. Who are we going to talk to today? <laughs> Who are we going to work on? I think it's Andrea's turn. I'm going to check in with Andrea. Andrea doesn't think it's her turn. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Hey. How are you, Andrea? Pretty good. Good. Well, it's very good to see you. We're happy to have you in this class. Very happy to be, have you a part of all of this. I'm very happy to be helping you into your 
harmonious union. And what a great smile. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear the background. Yeah. So how are things going on here? Oh, we got some giggles. So how are things going um, pretty, on your Tim Flynn journey? Um, pretty good. Um, spoke to uh, Mo um, yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't spoken in a while as far as on the phone. I've been working a lot, but mm -hmm. uh, we've still been communicating through like text and stuff like that. That's nice. Yeah. So how's your relationship going? Um, it's going pretty, I don't know, it kind of feels stuck a little bit. Yeah. Um, we're, we still feel like we're just still in the friendship stage. Um, mm -hmm. That's that good. Sometimes it's kind of throws me off a little bit with yeah. some of the texts or um, messages she'll send me. But uh, other than that, it's pretty well. Pretty good. Have you ever heard of a lover? I mean, other than it's one flame, right? That you would have this level of friendship first before anything else grows. Mm hmm You have heard of that. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever imagined that you would need this much friendship to move forward into your <laughs> romance? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I've told you this analogy many times before, but I'm going to say it again. Remember, you're not building a house. You're building a palace here. Mm -hmm. And a house requires normally a pretty basic foundation. Oh, we're friends, and then we, you know, move on into deeper things. <laughs> but that's a house, right? A mansion or a palace, oh boy, there's a lot of foundation to get laid before even the first wall goes up. S stretches for miles, this foundation. I don't think we need this much. But you do if you're building a palace, right? Mm -hmm. So you understand that, um, yes, there's a lot to be built here. And you understand that, yes, it's worth it. Ugh. You understand that it's okay. Just give it up and find someone else. I don't know. I get it. I get up. I get the obsession where, you know, how that works sometimes. But it's never usually real. Because as soon as they get together, it's like you, you deal with the real world problems then of like who's doing the dishes and, you know, like all that stuff. And it's not... Like, the fantasy is the part that's so exciting. The, the idea of building a palace sounds so magical, but then you get out there and you start, like, hammering and laying bricks and, you know, putting concrete on. It's horrible. It's awful. And, like, yeah, at the end of it, maybe it's worth it, but, like, if you don't even own the land and you're building this palace and, like, the people are saying, get away from here every day, like, you know... That's kind of the situation they're in, not like, oh, we're both doing this together and we've arrived at this. this. These people are one-sidedly trying to have a relationship. It's like, uh, it's like, and probably they're not saying that much. Like, they're not saying like, hey, you know, she texted me that she stopped texting her. I wonder how direct these texts and communications are from the other side of like them being nice and saying to back off or what to develop your friendship and you understand that it's okay to not be plugging away at it every five minutes right friendships yeah. sometimes require <laughs> space right and your own emotional journey requires space so it's safe to take that journey it's safe to let that foundation be laid even though you're working really hard at it you're doing a lot of inner spiritual work you're doing yeah, all exactly. the right things you're not deviating from the path in any way i know because i feel it inside and i've been watching a journey for quite some time you haven't messed up. You haven't gotten off the path. And I think a little part of you was surprised that we spoke to you at all today, you know, let alone be the first person to dive into, but it was time. It was time to check in. It's time to do a little more work here because um, it's time. When it's time, it's time. Yep. Yeah. How do you know it's time, Shalia? Hmm? How do you know when it's time for something? Oh, uh, because uh, I say so. And... <laughs> <laughs> How does someone else know that it's time for them? <laughs> Julia? I don't know. What? Is that your answer? You're just going to leave it at that? Oh, you just I'm asked... trying to help the audience no, here. No, I thought you were calling on someone else. No, no, I was calling on you. Oh, I thought you said, does someone else want to answer that? No, no, I was asking you, like... Okay. Oh, you how must... does someone else know that it's time for oh, them? Oh, okay. It's because these earbuds... Um, because you feel it in your heart. Okay. You know, you feel it in your heart when you know, like, it's time to move forward on something because you start to feel that energy of inertia, uh, which is not that fun. It's a little uncomfortable. I don't know. I think it's really comfortable to, like, want to drink a glass of water. I'm talking about inertia. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the same thing. Okay. Well, you know when it's time to drink a glass of water. 
they hate each other <laughs> this this twin flame ship is fraught with um passive aggressiveness oh you're like mm. just time to have a sip you know yeah <laughs> and it's so good it's very good right mm -hmm. and you're like you, after you have your sip and you're satisfied you look at the water and go, that's enough Mm -hmm. But you know it's time based upon the feeling in your heart. Right, right, exactly. When you're not numbed out to that. Feeling, yeah, for sure. You know. And this is these key, this key idea of numbing, right? That um, so many people get tripped up on. They're like, I want to be in harmonious union, and my twin flame won't talk to me. My twin flame won't see any of this. We can be friends in Andrea's case, but we can't go any further forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what am I numbed out to? And the key is, I, I don't feel what I'm numbed out to because I chose not to feel. It's okay. It doesn't make you better or worse or more or less if you feel or don't feel. I'm not special because I feel my whole harmonious union. Which is, that's where I am. are okay. you saying? And where you are is where you are, and that's okay. Right, so, Andrea, can you tell us about uh, the beautiful friendship that you're developing with Mel? Say it one more time. Can you tell us about the beautiful friendship that you're developing with Mel? She's like, no, I can't. Um, we just become more, um, more intimate uh, and more open. Um, there was a point when we were really having, or I was really having a hard time understanding her as far as communication. Yeah. Um, and I pretty much confronted her about it, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it opened up like a lot because she just came more, um, more straightforward about like how she was feeling and it allowed me to be more straightforward about like how I was feeling um, and like what was really going on in my life because that was something I really didn't do much was like mm -hmm. tell her like what was going on as far as like my everyday life wow. so, um, so that, that mm -hmm. um, really opened up a lot and even more talkative about that and just yeah so are you doing all this <laughs> communication to try to get something from her Huh? Are you communicating? Are you having this relationship to try to get something from her? Obviously, that's the whole premise of this class, bro. Duh. She wants a harmonious union with this person. No. No. Just, and I think that a lot of people no. would see that and be like, that's weird. I mean, they're just friends and, you know, <laughs> Andrea's in love with Mo and Mo won't have anything to do with her. But, you know, Andrea's still willing to be friends and not need anything from her. Well, you know, that's mastery from Andrea's part. Right. And because of that mastery, it allows Andrea to actually develop a real friendship based on love with her twin flame. So can you see the progress you are making in the realm of your friendship? Yes. No. Wow. Especially from since the beginning. We made a lot, a lot of progress. <laughs> yes. So hold that thought. We're going to jump over to Fabian. Have a little contrast here. Or maybe not. Poor Fabio. Hey, you just muted him, Julia. No, I... No, you can't no. unmute anyone. No, no, I was muting Andrea. Oh, I apologize. I do know how some technology works. <laughs> okay. Still learning our technology on this one. Hi, Fabio. Thanks for your patience with us. Hey, Jeff. Can I say hi to Julia? Hey, Julia. She's here too now! <laughs> welcome, Julia. We didn't really welcome her, we just... They are so passive-aggressive to everybody. Popped her in, we're like, hey, it's normal that she's here, but uh, we didn't start. You well, know, the so audience doesn't know. I mean, except for last week, I wasn't, you know. Well, we've, the... I don't think we've ever had a Twin Flame Ascension School class where you've been here with me. No, no, hasn't been necessary. <sighs> She'll be here from now on, but I'll be here from now on in the recorded class, right? Right, so very glad to have you here. Thank you. Um, Jeff keeps like hitting the chair or something or the desk, and it's driving me insane. How's your Twin Flame journey coming? Fabian, how's your relationship with your twin flame? Yeah. Um, well, as you already said, it's a contrast to Andrea's story because um, I'm not really seeing anything on the external. Mm -hmm. Most of my twin flame journey happens inside, yeah. in the internal, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I don't have a lot of communication going on at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's probably for but the best. Um, I can feel that under the surface, like, you know, on the surface level, there's a lot of confusion, upheaval from time to time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I can I can feel that under the surface, that there's so much beauty emerging, and it is a different level that is 
coming. You know, I, I can feel it very strongly. And there's a lot of light and energy under the surface, and it is already radiating mm. toward. Like, it is kind of difficult to describe, but. So in reality, what he's saying is, I am not talking to the person I like. There is no communication, but I feel like I'm getting better and it's going to come any minute. Okay, well, that's also not something that you should probably think in relationships because you're just going to be let down at the, you know, least. And at the most, you are going to not take the other person's consent into consideration. If this person doesn't want to be with you and doesn't want you to contact them, is it put down a boundary. Like, you can you must respect that. <laughs> That's like the opposite of what they're teaching in this class. Like take these people's boundaries and throw them out the window. And I guess it's like almost, I don't think narcissistic is the word, but like self-centered where their belief is that this twin flame is you. So if, you know, the way you treat yourself, so if you can be a little harder on yourself or push yourself or force yourself to do something, you can also force your twin flame, who is also yourself into loving you which is like, that person has their own life. <laughs> They're not pu putting that into consideration at all in these classes. <sighs> but um, I can feel that everything is going well, even though I am still upheaving, even though on the service level it doesn't look too good in the, in the way that um, I'm not having so much communication going on despite me working so hard and uh, dedicated on this uh, twin flame manifestation. Mm -hmm. So how do you stand it, Fabian? How do you go day to day and all you're getting is inner results and she never talks to you, you don't really ever talk to her? How do you go, how do you, how do you stand? Yeah, good question, Jeff. <laughs> good question. That doesn't sound like a very harmonious situation to be paying three grand to, to participate in. Yeah, good question. Stand it. How do you live? How do you keep moving I forward? Don't really, yeah, I don't really do all of this because I want something in the external. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the end, it is always a feeling that I want, that I desire. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter if there is a body next to me right. or not. It is all about the feeling. And I understand because you taught me that I will get the result when the work is done, when the inner work is done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, so I understand and realize that the inner work is a reward in itself. Mm -hmm. The journey is a reward in itself, the whole experience. And I can feel and I know that I am making progress. Yeah. I, I, I can see that I'm transforming and changing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is how I um, know that it's all going well. The, uh... Okay, I'm skipping him. Let's go to Gregory. I agree. Let's hear from Gregory. See what caused the downfall of his leaving the school the next week and then them doing an hour-long uh, session about it. Those, the viewers to know that, um, you know, if you've made it this far, you know, through class one and class two and you're, you're here still listening and, you know, you're here hearing the stories, you've earned it. You've earned the right to hear their stories. You've earned the right to be here with us. And we hope you choose to continue with us beyond the first three paid classes because all the juicy stuff is going to be deeper in. All the juicy stuff is going to be when you see them come into Harmonious Union. You see them all today. You see where they are. Mm -hmm. and, you know, money even the saying the same things. I feel good about my journey. I feel good about where I am. And I'm headed toward, you know, the greater thing. Uh-huh. It's called delusion. Well, you might be asking, how do I get to that place? And don't worry, we're showing you, and we'll continue to show you. But, um, you know, stay with us. No! Because we've done it before. Ironically, Greg we're is next. We're doing it right now, we're going to do it again. We're <laughs> going to bring all of these people in harmonious union, and you'll get to watch, and it's going to be beautiful. Wow! And we hope that, you know, you choose to take up the work upon yourself as well so that you too can come into your harmonious union. Because the world needs more love, always needs more love. Okay. And what better love is there than the love of you and your twin flame in harmonious union?
puppies and you know, cats. Shelly and I were out running some errands today, and I stopped at a traffic light, and I looked over, and I saw a couple smiling at each other's faces, and they weren't twin flames, and I could see there was something else going on. But I just, God showed me, he said, Jeff, imagine if the twin flames were this common, that you could look through, you know, anywhere and see people in love. What a wonderful world this would be. <laughs> and who do you know that doesn't want to be in love? with their true twin flame, with their ultimate lover. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be in love. Mm -hmm. Everyone, even the grumpiest grump, wants to be in love. <laughs> Oscar the Grouch but himself. These, you know, these acts of fear are a cry for help, a call for love. Mm -hmm. You're either calling for love or you're expressing it. And here we are, expressing love and calling for love at the same time. Mm -hmm. Please love yourselves. Please choose to do the inner work. Okay. Please don't give up on yourself, because we don't give up on you. Okay. We love you. Tell your Gregory. So thanks for that, Lorraine. We're going to check in with Gregory now. We don't give up on you, unless you're Gregory. We will be giving up on in one week. If God is communicating again with these people, you know, about life and about all these teachings, wouldn't they say Gregory's about to betray you? Gregory is about to betray you. You are the second coming. We wanted to warn you because you are almighty. Jeff and Shalia, this is a message for you. Greg, don't trust him. They seem to be blindsided by this betrayal. And I find that to be rare and un un unlikely if they were truly divine. Uh, thank you to Anna Canari Carina. Anna Carina 2.0. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anna, Cari Anna Carina picked a face vomiting. <laughs> And for that, I say, for that, I say this. Clear, clear, clear. And also this. I want to throw up. Hold on. And also, jeez, this is so good. That's what I don't feel like when watching these videos. <laughs> okay, back to Gregory, who's been excommunicated from the group. Hello, Mr. Gregory. Hello. Hello. Howdy. Actually, your twin flame calls you Greg, and I've never actually yeah. asked you what you prefer, because I just like see the name on your, your email or whatever, and it's Gregory, and I just say Gregory, and I didn't bother saying anything else. You know, I've known you for all these weeks now, I've had all this time <laughs> talking, and I've been calling you Gregory a lot. Do you prefer Gregory or Greg? Um, and actually, um, I don't have a preference on it. Uh -huh. um, it's whatever you feel more comfortable with saying. Uh -huh. um, my, I'm named exactly after my father. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I'm named after my father. We have the exact same name. And so my, my family calls my father Greg, and they call me Gregory. Ah. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't bother me um, in either which case. Like my, my, my parents, my mom, will call me Gregory. So it's whatever you feel most comfortable with saying. Why does Jenny call you Greg? She calls me Greg. Uh, it was, we actually had a conversation about this. Uh, I think it was yesterday uh, where we talked about, um, you know, our names and this, that, and the other, and what we wanted to be called. Mm -hmm. And I've actually... He's already wearing a wedding ring and they just exchanged names this week. No wonder he quit in the next week. <laughs> actually, honestly, decided to start calling her Jennifer. Oh. Uh, and so uh, it, 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 it is. Jeez, oh my. Uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a little bit different because when I said, when I say Jenny, it doesn't feel right. And we were talking about that. And she said, um, then she let me know the story about her name. Mm -hmm. um, I let her know the story about my name. I think it was just like natural for us to like uh, just start saying that because I'm yeah. like, I want to call your name is Jennifer. Like, Jennifer. And so she was like, Okay, I'm just all right. So that's when I started calling her. <laughs> wow. There's so much power in a name. So yeah. now that I see the story behind it, I'm going to still call you Gregory for now. That works. Okay. Because Jenny is calling you Daddy when she calls you Greg. So I'm not, I'm not going to call you Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let your woman call you Daddy. <laughs> For now, and then you know, yeah. as that evolves, I might change it to Greg when it's not so you know so much daddy behind it. And not to say you know not to emasculate you in any way, but there's something you know personal and private going it's on. It's healing, that, yeah. yeah. It's healing so, for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna leave that to her. I'm gonna call you Gregory for now. Is that okay? 
That works for me. Sounds yeah. good. So tell me about how things are going with you and Jenny. I'm going to do the same for her as well. <laughs> I understand. So uh, everything, uh, believe it or not, we are having like this most, it, it's the most fun conversation. It's like having this, um, like I, I called it like you're having this inner monologue with yourself, but someone else is saying it. And mm. so it's literally, we're having all of these conversations and they're absolutely hilarious. And we, um, interestingly enough, uh, had a conversation yesterday, just as far as like, you know, we're kind of planning on, you know, where our next step is going to be, what we're planning on doing and this, Leaving. you know, everything else that's coming on. <laughs> and, uh, she was like, so is it okay if I just start introducing you as my boyfriend? And I was like, Ooh. oh, Jenny, I've been doing that for like the past like week and a half. I just have to have this conversation with you. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, so, that's already happened. Where so have you been? Out, time, time out here. Time out. I, I'm not sure if I heard that accurately. So, yes, that's your, so. Jenny's your girlfriend now? Yes. Okay, and you're Jenny's boyfriend. Correct. Why didn't you say anything to us beforehand? Yeah, Fabian knows. He's clapping. <laughs> So what's that? Uh, what's that mean? It, Tell us what that means. What, what do you think gosh? it means? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? To be honest with you, it literally it just happened last night before. Oh, um, okay. You know, I had to go out there and have a meeting and whatnot. Wait, does, and do so Anthony right now, do Anthony and Fabia know yet? Is this the first time they've heard this? No, I let them know uh, right before the call. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. Okay. And. Well, they need to know. It's a. Uh, it's kind of surreal. I'm like, oh, okay, this is happening. Like I was doing it like it was like <laughs> it was nothing. Yeah. Um, and it, it was hilarious because I was going, I was on uh, Facebook last night, mm -hmm. and before she, we had the conversation, I was like, maybe I should change my Facebook status, and then that like literally, ended up messaging me, and she sent me over that message. Mm. It's like, is that all right? And I was like, I was just thinking about this. Sure. Wow. <laughs> so what does that mean to you? What does, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend mean to you? This is like cult conversion therapy. Very bizarre. I, I feel as though that this is the first step for our, our commitment. I think it was like the, our commitment to one another. Like we, I asked her the other day, I was like, so do you believe I'm your true twin flame? And she, she kind of looked at me, and I was like, no, I, I don't care what everyone else says. I care what you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, As you should. And from that point, it was kind of, we kind of veered off topic where it didn't get discussed. So I think mm -hmm. at this point, it's more of like, for us right now, this is us accepting, mm -hmm. you know, who we are, but we're moving at, a, a, at our own pace, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And symbolizes that 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 you know kind of like all of those like lingering thoughts those lingering you know relationships those old patterns that i was holding on to it's like now mm -hmm. they can like fully be let go um with me not only i know understand that we made the commitment spiritually speaking oh. but it's another thing when we <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I, I say it that I mean, it's kind of like, why are we going to pretend like we're not going to spend the rest of our life together? Mm -hmm. like, nice. You know, I know, like, <laughs> we might as well just get this moving. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you sound like Jeff. That, that's kind of just. I'm glad that he came to his senses. Because I agree. He seems, I mean, they all seem fine. Like, the one guy, I don't forget his name, John or something, like, seemed really not not okay but he i don't know it's just like these people are going through confusing times and i'm glad like the fact that you can get out of it and he got out of it like i feel like you know is a good sign for your mental health <clears throat> he had enough f foresight to go okay let me cut ties with this this is too weird even for me position when he asked me to be his girlfriend like yeah we know you know like i know you know we know what are we waiting for <laughs> like i don't know <laughs> yeah. So Gregory, let me just get clear before I, you know, make any statements. 
you have committed to her and she's committed to you? We lost him there. He left early. I just see him smiling. Bye, Greg. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. That's good. So you've committed to her and she's committed to you. Yes. And um, you recognize and her as your twin flame. Yes, I do. And she recognizes you as her twin flame? Yes, she does. Do you know what I'm about to say? No. No. Well, congratulations, you've achieved twin flame union. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Clap longer. It's in the mail. No, it might get a little squash. Right? <laughs> I know, I was making a joke. I know, me too. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations okay. to Jenny, too. Yes, and to Jenny. Oh, wow. wow. I was this? waiting for, like, us. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was messaging her last night, and I was like, you know, I was waiting until we actually, you know, came together in the physical for us to actually have this conversation. But she's mm -hmm. like, yeah, we'll make it official, official when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't even meet in person yet? Mm. God. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a motivated woman to me. Uh, it is hilarious to me. She, she's like, because um, before, you know, we had a little bit of, we had a little bit of reservation as far as mm -hmm. like, um, you know, whether or not she was going to come to Vegas or if I was going to move to Florida, move to Florida. Yeah. And then, um, that's also a lot to be done in. Like they met each other a week ago. They didn't even know each other's names a week ago. And now they're going to move to Florida or Vegas and they're going to get, they're being clapped at by the group. That's a very, and he was gay two months ago. Like that seems like a lot to process for any person. All of a sudden, it kind of just went all the way out the window. She's like, okay, so when I get to Florida, when I get to Vegas, um, I want to do this. I want to do that. Like, we have to go do this. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and she sent me a message not so long ago. She's like, so should I start sending uh, packages of, like, my books and all this other stuff? I'm like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Seems yes. I, I want to help you with a big block here. Okay. okay. You're idealizing what it's supposed to look like when you have a woman with you. Oh, you're going to have your own place, and I live with roommates, and all this, but... Is Welcome, Jesse. Isn't it possible that she comes lives and lives with you where you are now? Possible, possible. that she can't come live with me now. Uh, it's just that the, the, the people that I live with... Um, I'm not comfortable with having a woman in the house with. Why not? That makes sense. Why not? Uh, just because of, uh, it's just a very open environment. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a lot of privacy there. That makes sense. So there's going to be a lot of, a lot uh, of man, man genitalia walking around the house. <laughs> pretty much. Okay. Uh -huh. and so let's, I'm not... let's go into that a little deeper and let's find out what makes you uncomfortable about that. Let's see if there really is a reason that uh, you know she shouldn't be there, or if maybe it's just some blocks you're having. So let's get to the bottom of this, because I know this has come up with us before. Does that sound good to you? Maybe it's because it's been a week. <laughs> maybe that's a lot of pressure <laughs> to move in with your new girlfriend immediately upon not even ever meeting in person. Yes. Okay, so what about having naked men around the house and her seeing it um, is absolutely unacceptable? Because it, in, you know, I really wouldn't want that for my woman, you know, in no, an you ideal wouldn't. situation. <laughs> I'm very protective of my woman, so, so I, I understand that um, I mean, that's not ideal, and you can't ask them to change because that's, you know, that's been the natural, um, you know, way of your household. It's a kind of agreement. The yeah, you can't, you can't ask them to change agreement, their agreement. Yeah. You know, you might. Yeah, it's written in the, in the lease that you're allowed to walk around naked all day. For sure, that's that's um, a legal rule in the state of Nevada. Um, if you sign a, if you're a renter, if you're a renter, you have full rights to be nude in your communal space for sure. Yeah, but they're probably gonna say no, so you're left with where you start. So what about that is just unacceptable to have you know have your woman around? 
honestly speaking, I think you touched on it. I think I'm just more protective. Um, I don't want to be in a situation in which we're, um, I'm at work mm -hmm. or, and she's at the house and, you know, they get into like their spats and their arguments. And now I've, I feel as though that I'm not there mm -hmm. to try to oh, be there. Did you hear that one? What? I feel as though I'm not there. Mm, yeah. Did you catch that, Gregory? I did. So <laughs> what do you think that, what do you think was the problem with that? I feel as though I'm not there. Um, I think I'm separate from my twin flame. Correct. But you live there, you know, reasonably comfortably, an acceptable situation for you to live in. Is that correct? For me personally, yes. Yeah. Yeah, this is like the high pressure sales tactics. And I think that they really want these couples to get together quickly so that they can use them as testimonials for the next group and go, look, they're, they're living together. This really works. And so there, there's this mad dash to force these couples to get into union very, very quickly, but also not just like a virtual situation, like get together so that we can use you as an example as to how serious this, you know, school is about forcing you to be with somebody. Are you separate from each other flame? Yes. No, I'm not. So is there not enough space for the two of you to live there? Is that the problem? You live in like a, a little closet? I, ideally, that would probably be best because it's kind of like a small little part of the of the house. It's mm -hmm. kind of like it was a transition house while I was doing a little bit of other work. It was super, super cheap rent. So I was like, yeah. oh, I'll just I'll just stay here um, until I get my finances all together right. get that all taken care of right and then go from there so it's not like a um although i we would be comfortable together it's just not I big do. enough mm -hmm. for us to be really really comfortable and there's not ah. privacy so where do we live right now Shelly? is it big enough for us to be really really comfortable it's just enough <laughs> <laughs> Really, really comfortable? No. no. Is there enough privacy for us to feel really, really comfortable? No. No. <laughs> no. If you draw no. the blinds, you know. <laughs> yeah. No. No. We don't have that. We've been together for years. Oh, yeah. And we, la we lived with roommates and... Ooh, we did it all. First, they, they force upon, they tell these people in this class to, you know, stalk their twin flames. Then when the, one of them actually does um, find interest back, they go, uh, f get into the, like a one room uh, situation in a new state with a person you've never met and a situation you don't know what you're walking into. Um, that's what you guys should do. It's like the worst advice possible for relationships to work out. This is the first time we've actually not lived with anyone else and mm -hmm. you know and we're still out, outgrowing this place but it's fine for now okay so are we through those blocks or is there still concerns there yeah gregory um i think there's any concerns there okay <laughs> they're so mean mainly the, the the only concern that i have right now is getting the plane ticket for her to come, which will happen here in the next week or two. It's just more so the physical time till that point happens. If um, that makes sense. Uh, Welcome, Elon. So what are you concerned about? Musk. What's your real concern? My real concern right now is, I guess per se, it's more that stereotypical being able to provide. Provide. Mm-hmm. Correct. So you feel um, like you're supposed to provide for her? What do you think is wrong with that statement? Because we're the Who same. Provides for uh, her? Who provides for her? God. God does. God does. Good. <laughs> God provides. Um, correct. Good. Can God work my shift at McDonald's tonight, please? That feels good. Let God provide for her. <laughs> Much better. Mm-hmm. Good. God, don't so, do it. what else doesn't feel good about her coming to stay with where you are now? It won't get done. Anything? Or does it feel like the right place to start? 
just to start. We're not saying live there forever or even a long time at all. How's it feel just to start there? If God don't do it, it won't get done. Honestly speaking, I'm still feeling as though this is not Good. the right environment to bring her into. Why? What about uh, it? What about it? God, this pressure. It is. This pressure. Why do they want this girl to move into his like roommate situation so badly? Other than they want to show other people we get, we make results. It's not necessarily that it's not necessarily completely safe or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's more so. Um, I don't want to. That's valid. I guess this is the block. I don't want her here at this place. Oh. Valid. Is that true? Um, if you could have her here right now, in this place, would you say yes or no to it? If I was like, behold, Jenny stands behind door number one. Do you want her to, will you open the door? <laughs> open Probably the door not. Probably not, honestly. I would completely open the okay. door. I was like, all right, since you're here. So you do want her there. <laughs> Correct. If she's here right now, but if she's not here, I want to oh. have her in a... I'm going to make her... I'm going to keep her away. Why doesn't he go keep to her? her? Or keep her close. Which of the two would you prefer? Do you feel like it's take her close? Do you feel like it's unacceptable for you to live where you live right now? Completely. Okay, that's your problem. Probably. <laughs> yeah. God provided this space for complete. you. God. <laughs> Esky two hundred three says moving in together would probably be easier if he wasn't gay and this wasn't a three minute old relationship. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> provided this place for you. Oh man. Correct. Yeah, and it's not your dream home. God knows that. Oh, well. <laughs> it's not our dream home either. No. I mean, their dream home is a place in Michigan with like a million doors and a two inch TV. So dreams really can't come true. And if you saw what we moved into together, I mean, I mean, Jeff came to, when Jeff came to visit me for the first time, you know, from Hawaii. She lived in a garage. I lived in a garage. <laughs> It wasn't even the whole garage. It was a little the edge of the garage. And the only access to the house was like, you know, I had to walk, obviously, you know, there was like a door at the other end of the garage and it led into my friend's daughter's bedroom. So we'd have to like go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and sneak through <laughs> to, like, sneak because there was a three-year-old and an like, eight-year-old oh, sleeping. so bad. <laughs> but this was, that was what we had, you know? And then when... <laughs> um, and then when uh, I left that place, or we left that place to go, uh, we went to go up to Michigan for a visit, and then we went back to Hawaii, like, we didn't even have a, a proper, I don't know, we had an apartment, but it was, we walked in and it was scary. There was, like, garbage everywhere from the person that left. There was cat box, dirty cat box. Cat poop. Smells we like literally cat poop. had... Uh, so they're like, this is the life that we want you to have. <laughs> Our horror story slash love story is the one that you should emulate with your new girlfriend. This is good advice for you. We lived in a crack den and everyone should have that experience. It's like going to college. Like you should have, you know, the, the, um, struggling to survive experience, um, with your true love that always monetary stress and finding a place, a stable place to live is always good, uh, on a relationship for sure. Uh, not even a bed, no furniture. We like we slept threw on blankets all of on our the floor. clothes and blankets on the ground. We like slept on the ground the first night. <laughs> and I was we like, lived no. in a in a hole in a basement where there was literally a hole this big and there was in, a in hole the wall. In the wall, yeah. Because someone got angry and punched it there, and there was an alcoholic Somebody. next to us in the room with paper thin walls next oh, to us. Oh, we had bad abusive alcoholic. <laughs> We've had some awful living situations, but we got through it. So, so why would you put that upon someone else? <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't sound like you had a great time. You got through it, but that doesn't mean that you should, everyone should do it once again. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. 
So yeah, you're gonna have the not nicest luxury living situation in the world for her to come live there. Right. But it's really about you accepting yourself. It's really about you being willing to say, I, I am worthy of love. And I accept that this is where I am in life right now. And that's okay. I had a similar issue too. When we were online dating, I felt that, or I thought that I needed to have my perfect body before I could really be with Jeff or, or that we should be together. Like I didn't want to be with him while like being overweight. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we worked through that one together and yeah. I realized, well, Fuck it, you know, it is what it is right now, and I'm just gonna do the best I can with what I have and where I'm at, and either he's gonna love me and accept me, or he's not, and then uh, I don't want a guy like that anyway, you know, so, but I was really hard on myself, and I, I you know, I had to let that one go, but you're going through the same thing, but with your living situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. do you accept that it's okay for you to live there right now, Gregory? No. Yes, I do. Good. Good. Do you accept that it's appropriate for you to live here for this time? Kitty. Yes, I do. Okay. Do you accept that it's it might be appropriate for her to come live there with you? No. Yes, I do. Okay. Is there anything yet that feels bad this about her coming to live there still, or does it feel like a juicy bucket of joy? Blech. Come here, baby girl. There's nothing wrong with her coming to come live here, but I'm also going to keep my eye out if there's something better. That's nice. Sure. See, that's nice. That's the right posi Good. disposition. Good. Yeah. So you don't accept this as your final resting place, and you're quickly working to find something better. That's good. Correct. That's good. We have a timeline, and we need you to do this quickly. How does that us. feel? It, that feels a lot better, actually. Yeah. So does it feel appropriate for her to at least come visit you now? Oh, yeah. Call me and my love. And potentially just stay there. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> just accept uh, the return ticket. <laughs> yeah, just buy, buy one way Wait, and then have her leave when she's ready. Correct. And don't, and that's, and that's... don't have her, you know, like bring all of her stuff. It's just a, it's just a visit. And you don't know how long the visit's going to be. It could be forever. Adam. Or it could be just for the weekend to try stuff out, and then it makes sense for her to go back and, you know, pack all her stuff up and come back. Right? Don't there. But don't, don't uh, you know, it might not feel appropriate to give her a return ticket, or it might, you know? Just throwing cool ideas out there. Yeah, just a return ticket feels like too, like... You know, Unless like she's got work, dry, you know, on Monday morning, and she's got to be back by that time. Whatever. Sure, yeah. Why so, wouldn't she not know, have work? All this is stuff to think about. Oh yes, it's literally at this point. It's as soon as we have the money to for either of us to travel. Uh huh. Um, it's pretty. I feel like it's just going to be like a done deal. Like even if I went to Tampa, mm -hmm. I feel as though I'm going to be buying a plane ticket for her to come back with me. Right. And if she came out here to Vegas, she's going to pretty much stay. I see. Yeah. So. I see. Because we're, it's, yeah, like, where's your life? You know, your life is together, right? And it would just feel weird, I would think, mm -hmm. to, like, for her to go back, and then you'd just be, like, sitting there in a different state, and, like, well, you know. Well, so does it feel appropriate to do, like, a trial test run, make sure you like each other, or are you ready to, like, dive, move, in. dive in? What's, is there, a, has there been a conversation about that yet? We have. Someone asked how long it was from this conversation to the one we just watched of, of them, like, hating him. One week. I, I'm pretty sure because um, in the beginning of the other uh, video, they said, yeah, last week he just got, uh, you know, into Harmonious Twin Flame Union, which is what he basically proclaimed onto him. And then he was clapping, like, for, you know, five seconds too long. Um, celebrating that moment. So, um, yeah, one week, I believe, from this moment that they... Uh, I mean, to be fair, this whole conversation is about not having enough money to have this girl come out from Tampa to Vegas and him getting his own place and all that for they so that they can live together. And so apparently then he told them, um, Jeff and Shalia, that he didn't have enough money and that's why he was quitting. And they didn't believe in that, but um, that's what they thought. You know, that's what he was. I think he's nice. He's probably trying to be nice. Like, oh, it's just because I don't have the money, and I'm trying to 
save. Um, that's why I'm quitting the school. So that's not that long of time for all this. I think they're putting the pressure on him and then maybe upon reflection of this conversation, which is pretty awkward to witness, and you can see the high pressureness okay. of them Colt. pushing him into this direction. Maybe he thought about it again or talked to someone about it, and they were like, this is not okay, man. Just, just back off, and he agreed. Uh, Anna Katarina 2.0, thank you again. Thank you so much. Anna Katarina said, or picked a juicy bucket of joy. That's how I feel when I go to Vegas. Right, Taro? A juicy bucket of joy. Just kidding. I don't like Vegas. The only thing about Vegas I find to be cool right now is the sphere. But other than that, I'm not a Vegas fan. I went once when I was like 22, 23. Not my city. Too expensive. Very drink culture. Very scary to walk around. In my opinion. I'm sorry if you live in Vegas. I only went to the Strip, so to be fair, I never went to the... Uh, suburbs. And for that, I say, and I will tell her girlfriend you were so on. And I would also say, I don't know anything more cultish than that. And finally, this spells cult, C U L T. And also, oh my God, Austin is going to be so good. I'm so excited. I don't use that one enough. Okay, bye. I've had Thank several you. conversations about that. We, mm. We've talked about um, uh, just me going out there to Tampa just to do like a, like, uh, I'll be there for like two or three days or whatnot. Sure, sure. Um, just so that way, I guess per se, when she gets up and she decides, and when we're at that moment where we're coming to Vegas, yeah, um, that her parents aren't like, you just randomly met this random fellow. Like, how, how are you just going to get up and go? Yeah. Mm. So we've talked about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I feel as though that it's not going to be like a test run if we like each other. I think it's yeah. just more so like a formality for everyone else. So why does everyone else matter to you? Are they going to pay your bills? Are they going to pay for your wedding? Are they gonna, they got, do they have some say-so that, you know, that's appropriate? you have an agreement with them? Does she have an agreement with them? It, it's not... Uh, for me mm -hmm. it's more so for her okay so what is it her for for her right, right now her parents are paying for her to go to college ah is she going to continue college after she comes to be with you yeah i hope so um we're looking at that right now i have a couple of my contacts at the university here i see letting her know that that process okay so it may be a good idea for her to continue college yeah uh We've talked about that. We said we'll come together once we are face to face to figure out where our bigger purpose is going to be. Oh, that's um, your problem. Ah, uh, uh, that's your problem. Lots of little things, stinky little things, right? What do you think? Do you think he's going to support her going to college, or or he thinks that college is for suckers? What do we think? I have a feeling he's going to be like, your purpose is to love each other and to just be spiritual healers like us. You don't need college for that. And they all make sense. Like, they're all very logical based upon what we've been taught societally. Nothing stupid about what you're mm -hmm. doing. You're not like, okay, and then I smash rock and chew with teeth. Yeah. Like, this is not stupid stuff. This is very logical, intelligent stuff. But it's really important because, you know, with your twin flame, these pieces, they're different. Mm -hmm. So you can figure out your purpose now. You can actually start living it together right now. Make sense? Okay, what about the college thing? <laughs> you didn't answer the question that you proposed yourself. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. So, time to discuss your purpose, isn't it? Isn't it? I believe it is. Good. And we have our first three life purpose classes recorded for free that you guys can check out. Maybe even watch together. Oh, God. Yeah. Just saying. You might find something cool, you know, inspiring there. Oh, yes. That'll be exciting. Join our other program for more money. That one, I think, is also $3,333. So Greg's already paying 3300 bucks. Now he wants him to pay another 3300 bucks because now they got to find their life purpose. Okay, so it was a whole sales pitch. Don't go to college. Buy my course. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Now I understand. Good. Good. Yeah, we'll do that. I think, yeah, uh, yeah we'll definitely do that. I don't, have, I don't have any plans tomorrow, and I'm sure she doesn't, so we're good. Damn. Good. I'm sure she doesn't. 
Good. Well, congratulations on your union, Gregory. Congratulations on achieving Twin Flame Union. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. welcome. And for everyone else, just a reminder, um, you achieve Twin Flame Union when you recognize your true Twin Flame, and they recognize you as their true Twin Flame, and you make a commitment to each other to be together, like boyfriend and girlfriend, Facebook official, you know, that kind of thing. It's Facebook That's official. That's union. God, God acknowledges Facebook officiality. God is looking down and christening the union via Facebook status updates. And it says, I'm, it's complicated. What about that? What does that entail? Is that a union or no? That is union. And harmonious union comes when you see the other person as the truth of who they are to you. Literally, yeah, $3,000 per person to join this class, and they don't have a camera that's that good. They don't have a microphone. They're talking on Google Hangouts, which is free. They are making out like bandits. And you accept them as that. And the other person sees you for the truth of who you are to them at the core. You see it. You're there in that space at your core of oneness and you commit to that place together. That's harmonious union. And from that space, there is no going back. There is no going back. After that choice is made, all done with that journey. Only deeper journey. Now, it doesn't mean that you're... Okay, cool. All right, let's go to maybe... Let's go to a girly pop. Let's see. Let's listen to a female perspective here. Beginning is because um, the energy in this class is very big and different than our normal classes, and all the other students had an intro into it, but, you know, we need to give you time to relax and come into the space with us. But I um, want to say hello and check in with you and how your uh, Twin Flame journey is going. Hello? Ma'am? You're unmuted can, now. Yeah, we, can you hear me? Yep, yeah, I hear you just fine. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry. Sure, sure. Wow, I've just been um, listening and getting caught up emotionally with everyone mm -hmm. else's experiences. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure where to start. I'm really happy for Gregory. And I'm yeah, tell us about that. That's what we really need you for here. Is can you share with us what your experience with the class has been like so far? What did you see today? What did you learn today? What was what really spoke to you today? Nothing. So, yeah, I mean, I I don't know everybody really well because I'm mm -hmm. kind of new, but I, I have connected a, a number of times with Gregory, and it's really making me happy to see this unfolding for yeah. him. Um, I can feel the energy, and Maybe she got out he's too. such a beautiful, bright person that mm -hmm. I'm really happy for him. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. We're mm -hmm. happy for him, too. Yeah. They hate him now. Yeah, and... um. I, I think it's really nice for you both to be um, doing the class. Yeah. There's an energetic shift. I can feel it. Yeah. It's awesome. Because yeah. our, our full Yay. union is here. That's right, why. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's um, there's something about the energy which I think helped. To Boring. What about your twin flame? Stop praising this group. You're in the group right now. Why are we talking about how, what we learned in the group? This is the group. <laughs> This is what they do in conferences too. For these self-help conferences, they always bring people up to the stage to do a panel, but the panel is just about how much they love being at the conference <laughs> and how much they love doing the coaching. It's like, what am I actually learning here? Nothing. This is this is the conference. The conference and the panel is about how great the conference okay. is. I'm like, cool. people are paying to be here? This sucks. <laughs> like I'm already here, you already sold me. Now teach me the stuff that you claimed. Change my life, no. Nope, we ain't gonna do that. We will do anything but that. That is a, the last thing we're gonna do. Uh, thank you, Small Fry. Small Fry says one. Thank you for the first super on a live stream. It says it gave me a little little um, extra notification. Yay! Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, and for that I say Small Fry. The mango frequency. You know what goes with a good Small Fry? Priceless juicy nuggets. Hey, hey, 
small fry with some priceless juicy nuggets and also this is so good this is so good i need to put this that one next to the other one jeez this is so good i seen a so good panel uh thank you so much small fry okay let's see does she get any juicy does she explain her problems or what i'm not here for the sales pitch tunes it helps us tune in to, to that vibration. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my situation, I, I've i known my twin for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, I got a little bit emotional because, um, you know, we, we came, I don't know if we claimed each other, we came close to claiming each other without the school. Um, but both of us, um, have long-term relationships and we seem to be using that as an obstacle. Mm. We're having a really hard time letting go of mm. our respective, you know, um, partners that we've been with. He's been with um, his partner for 30 years. I've been with mine for 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think as I started making the choice and doing the mirror exercise, things accelerated and all this stuff started happening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I think it was Tori that was talking about being empath, empath, mm -hmm. empathic. Yeah. Um, I still feel really connected with my twin. I feel like I can really connect with his thoughts and how he's feeling. And, and I feel like his resistance to leaving his relationship, I'm mirroring that in re resisting leaving mine. I mean, they're so... You guys are actively in marriages and in relationships with people for over a decade in his case three decades you've only almost hit two and we're doing classes to try to convince someone else to be with you what the actual frick is this <laughs> oh boy that's uncomfortable and this is on facebook what? does her husband not have or her boyfriend or whatever 17 year old 17 year partner not year old 17 year partner doesn't see this public facebook group this seems risky. <laughs> My God. Oof. These people are risky. I love you. <laughs> That's what she says to her twin flame who's not her husband. My God. Ooh. Clear the vibes from, from this cursed relationship. I happen to be an empath myself. Okay, let's. This is like the tea. I like the drama of it all, but man, it's fucked up. Connected, like I can, I can really feel that um, energy from him and from me. Um, so it just got really overwhelming, um, and I'm also kind of stuck on a little bit of the issues that Greg was having. I'm like putting this job in front of the union, like and and. He and my Keep twin is that. putting having financial resources to take care of his family because he has to divorce mm -hmm. his family and continue to pay for his um, daughter's college, mm -hmm. and he's very worried about that. Right. So money's been kind of an obstacle that we've put into it, even mm -hmm. though both of us at the time we were speaking to each other um, voiced very clearly that we don't care about the money. Mm -hmm. Like we were kind of in the space that you and Shalia wound up actualizing that mm -hmm. we didn't care if we wound up living in a shack if we could be together <laughs> yeah. yeah but then the thing that tripped us up was that there that we would be hurting these other people that you know we were really involved with nope. and it's nope. just not been really it's hard. just not true it's just not true their path is theirs mm -hmm. your path is yours you choosing love for yourself loves others you never love another when you are doing it at the expense of yourself. False. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, you know, I think the divorce is probably the way to release them, you know, from, from this toxic situation. Um, but yeah, staying in the relationship while attending class to then try to convince someone to love you that you believe is like spiritually ordained your twin flame is pretty not great behavior, especially with kids involved. 
that is a whole messy ass situation. At least he seems to be on board with it as well, I guess. The at least in her from what her retelling is. Now, whether that's true or not, who's to say? But uh yeah. Yeah, I think that those people will be upset when they find this out on Facebook. Oh. Like like I don't I'm assuming she's not in couples therapy with her husband. Or he's not in couples therapy with his wife, but they're going to go to a class for more money than therapy would cost to be told what you're doing is right and you shouldn't feel bad about it. Okay. <laughs> people will do, people will join a cult before they go to therapy to deal with their problems. I am there some of the time and then my, I mean, at this point, my I've had the conversation with my partner. She knows mm -hmm. he's leaving at the end of the month. Yeah. We've had this conversation. Um, he's going to be gone 20 days out of 30 this month on a business trip. Mm -hmm. You know, I've given myself really more than him the space to get used to it because for me, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm owning it, like I'm taking responsibility. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing this for this other person. Right. For me, it just it was like all of it was happening at once. Right. And I started to just like, I don't know. I just started to melt down or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I slowed it down. So I'm not really surprised or upset that my twin is like not talking to me right now. Cause I can feel him. Like I can feel that. Um, <laughs> what? You know, that's, um, you know, I. He's not talking to you. But he's going to leave his wife for you and divorce his wife. And, and he needs to save money for his kid because he's going to leave for you. But he's not even talking to you right now. Girl, you need to, you need to communicate with this person. <laughs> or don't, actually, maybe. What are you talking about? I don't need to have a phone call conversation with him to know that because I, I feel it in myself. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect anything different. Mm -hmm. I think the <sighs> biggest obstacle I have is the fact that he's not speaking to me. <laughs> it's probably the biggest obstacle. And, and also he's married and you're also married. It seems, oh my gosh, what a mess. What a mess. What leads you to this place? I don't know. Good question. Feeling rejected at times, feeling abandoned and mm feeling like I'm so old that, <laughs> that, you know, like I've lived most of my adult life this way. What am I doing now? You mm. know, I, I don't stay there, but those are my obstacles at the moment. Mm. And, mm. and just like <laughs> how, you know, I deserve the love now. I deserve to have my mm. life still. Mm. I still deserve this, sure. even though I'm you know over 50. So, mm -hmm. okay. But don't yeah. force the man. Well, the last thing that we'll end this class on is for you, Inga, and it's for everyone. <laughs> She's like, I'm out. I'm descending right now to the floor. Um, yeah, that's fine. But like, maybe you should end the first relationship and not go after someone who's married. Maybe that's just my two cents as a non-relationship expert. Maybe that would, would help your, your matter. And uh, that is that it's safe to change. Mm -hmm. And no matter how long you've been making one choice and experiencing one reality, you too can change. You can change. Oh, I please let it. me mute it. Thank you. Yeah, that was my job. My bad, that's why it was, wasn't working for me. Yep. So you can change. You can change. You have the power to make a new choice. Like it's the as easy as would you like fries rain. with that? No you thanks. Or change. yes, please. Mm -hmm. Choice is easy, choice is delightful, and choice is the sovereign power in your reality. Your choice. Your choice affects only you. Unless it's a and your husband. <laughs> and his wife. Positive, loving choice. And then it affects everyone positively. And I definitely want to encourage people who are older, over 50 or whatever, um, to pursue your twin flame union because you have an eternal life you'll be dying um, soon that is complete you're old as hell you're a bag of bones no one's gonna like you you might as well give up so join our class and you know you can pick out plots together because you're haggard <laughs> that's what she says 
That's what her voice and tone are telling me. Completely unbounded by death. I mean, if I was 70, 80 years old and I, I knew about this, I'd, I'd be interested in it. Oh, I'd, yeah. I'd want to know. I'd want to get with my man and I'd want to enjoy um, the rest of my life. And knowing that um, he still stays with me, even if we do choose death, we'll always be together. Because once you heal separation... Excuse me, come again? We choose death together? Is this part of the end of this cult? Is this the end game? Is this the? Is this always the final stage in these um, cults, right? Like, there's an, always an out. There's always an ascendant, ascending. There's always a getting on the rocket ship. There's always uh, the government's coming to shut us down. Let's take some cyanide. Like, there's always an end thing. So whenever they bring up that, we're choosing to die, I tend to worry. Um, that transcends death. So even if Jeff and I choose to uh, die, we're still going to be in harmonious union together in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change a, a damn this thing. This is an eternal love. It's an eternal. Harmonious union is an eternal choice. Right. You can't go back on it. Yeah. Right. And that's why we teach it, and that's why we provide it through our work, because it's an eternal gift that we give to you. So thank you all so much for joining us in this beautiful class. Thank you. This wonderful success. Yeah. The only person it seemed like that has anyone is Gregory and he quit. So <laughs> I think uh, I think you should take the L. Take the goose egg on that one. Looks like the, the program ain't working. If, if, you, if you were an AA and um, 20 people were there and all of them were doing drugs and drinking the next day after the course because it was so triggering um i don't think we'd say that was it was working i think we'd have to start over do the steps again start a different step process <laughs> i don't know that was a weird example ah oh, man what a life huh well that's twin flames that's about it they have a church now too i looked at that already right um and they it's called the church of union so that's how they funnel their tax evasion i mean that's how they um commune commune with god look at this well hold on hey, did you see that that was the cutest thing ever come on do it again she was just saying hi oh, i ruined it she's like wants pets so she, here i'll put my hand here and see if she does again um so they are the leaders of a of a religion called unionism okay you will have harmonious twin flame union. You'll have truly nourishing food. Oh, look. Oh, she did it again. Dang it, I missed it. Okay, I pet her on the head. You'll have a direct relationship with God, source, spirit. On Sundays, you can join the live stream. Look, they're all dressed up, dolled up for church. They're not in the La Femme t-shirts, Femme Energy t-shirts. They're in suits and suits. Um... Yeah, there you go. Uh, oop, this website's messed up. They're gurus. There they are. Our gurus. We believe our guru gurus. <laughs> we believe the gurus. We believe our gurus were sent by God from heaven to bring us the teachings of union and partner with us in creating heaven on earth. Their authority comes from the results of their work, which completely transforms the lives of all those who sincerely engage with it. They ask us to try on their teachings in ways that feel good to each of us and then objectively review the results in an unattached and logical manner. If we find fault with any part of the teaching or are not satisfied with our results, we are each asked to raise an inquiry that we might contribute to the deeper discovery of truth. Okay, I think that sounds like don't question us, bitch. <laughs> their work is a living body of God. Oh, sorry. Their work is a living body of work that invites each of us to explore and experience it in our own unique way that we may find cl greater closeness to God, live an ever more joyful, peaceful, and harmonious life and make meaningful contributions to the world. Learn more about Jeff. Jeff Devine is his name, was born to working middle-class parents in rural Michigan. He was baptized Greek Orthodox and converted to Roman Catholicism at the age of seven. He attended Catholic school from the second through sixth grade and then moved to public school. Still passionate about God, he returned to catechism class at night as a young teen. 
Uh, he became disenfranchised with Christianity, namely due to its position on gay marriage. Jeff felt God created people perfectly, and he believed that the church saw people in the LGBTQ community as fundamentally sinful. Jeff loved all people and believed they should be given the same right to marry whomever they choose to love. Unless he says that you should marry a woman, um, then he's okay with gay marriage. Okay. <laughs> Confusing. He went to business school at Western Michigan University, and he stumbled upon a website about personal growth. Uh, he found out that you could change yourself. He began to, began to consume the subject rapidly. Then he got into the realm of spirituality. <clears throat> he finished his degree and met his first spiritual teacher, a Sufi, Sufi woman who introduced him to the dances of universal peace. What is that? He encountered new age concepts and para... Paramahasana Yogyanda. He learned about yoga and meditation, life after death, chakras, and reincarnation. Jeff began having profound, transcendental, mystical, spiritual experiences awakened by yoga, meditation, and other spiritual practices. In one such experience, he was visited by angels who came to him with a message from God. They told him his life purpose was to bring people back to God. Profoundly awestruck by the glory of God and totally impacted impacted and humbled he shook and he wept vowing to follow god to fulfill his destiny that fall he sold all his possessions filled a backpack with clothes and left for northern california where he studied yoga <laughs> it's interesting god i mean i don't i mean yoga it's like a well i don't know okay some some christians don't believe you should be doing yoga but all right i guess he's uh he's beyond that uh, where he deepened his spiritual studies, explored radical dietary philosophies, met many different people, and continued his business and entrepreneurial career at an internet marketing company. This move was a significant leap of faith because this is the moment he began consciously and intentionally living his life fully to God. This is when everything began to change for him. After a year, once again, sold all his possessions. <laughs> Why do you have to keep selling your possessions? <laughs> Why did you just... <laughs> okay uh he filled the backpack again with no possessions he sold them all but he's got new ones and then sold those again filled the backpack and flew to hawaii where he found natural harmony with the Hari krishna community okay you know who was also Hari krishna uh jay shetty just saying there he experienced deep immersion in an indian religion listened to regular talks about krishna and learned about deep love devotion and worship of god he stayed for five years before meeting his twin flame shalia and discovering and beginning their life's work together meeting shalia in sedona arizona was the, the most profoundly transformative experience of jeff's life she int introduced him to her spiritual teacher a nun who had left the convent to raise a family <laughs> and eventually went on to explore new age spirituality and personal growth. It was in this moment of Jeff's life that everything on his spiritual journey came together and blossomed into profound realization and awareness, rapidly transforming him from one who sought truth to one who found truth. Okay. Jeff's spiritual ability to channel fully awoke along with other spiritual and healing gifts. After one year of studying under that spiritual teacher, she died. <laughs> Okay, after one year of studying under that spiritual teacher, she died. Jeff and Shalia then became the teacher. I feel like the police should open an investigation. <laughs> the way that sentence is written. Whoa, okay. All right. During this time, everything and everyone in both their lives fell away. Okay, okay. All right. Every family member, friend, every opportunity and dollar in their bank account vanished. Oh my God. That's when you know things are going well. <laughs> On the brink of total destitution, their book, Twin Flames, Finding Your Ultimate Lover, was born. As every good self-help book is born through, through total destitution. <laughs> Oh, okay. That others might share in the infinite ecstasy and bliss of harmonious twin union. Having hit social and financial rock bottom and with nothing but God, each other and the teaching, they rose up from the ashes of their old lives to give birth to what would become unionism, steadily growing a following of students for their twin flame ascension school. The majority of those who completed live classes and continued the work went on to attain harmonious union. 
Today, Jeff and Shalia live in a beautiful home in the hills overlooking Lake Michigan, having total faith in giving all of themselves to God completely. He transformed them in his image and uses them as his instrument of peace. Together in total humility and service to his love, they lead the development of the Church of Union and the cultivation of unionism in those willing seekers of truth that may enter into eternity into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, whatever. And they have his Twitter page. <laughs> there you go he's got 249 followers and he is private <laughs> probably for the best okay wow should we learn about shalia real quick and then we'll call it a night i think that sounds good okay <clears throat> i should read it with the meditation music Like many young girls her age growing up, Shalia was introduced to the powerful romantic fairy tales produced by Disney movies, such as The Little Mermaid, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin, to name a few. I gotta zoom in, I can't read. The overall message she took away from these films that she watched rather religiously was that if she chose her one true love in her heart, remained true to her authentic self, followed her heart, and believed and was committed to overcoming the obstacles that stood between her and her destiny to be with her one true love, then the way would be made clear and the lovers would unite happily in deep eternal love and happily ever after is a reality. Wow, that was quite the mouthful. Shalea found this vision and message from the romantic fairy tales to be true in her own reality. Like many children her age in the 1990s experiencing divorce in the family, she felt in her heart that this cannot be what people really desire for their lives when they envision walking down the aisle and marrying the person in front of them. Shalia felt an inner call and quest to forever heal and have the perfect romantic partner, not just for one lifetime, but for all of eternity, therefore eradicating the divorce statistic in the future for humanity when they discover the truth and science behind the phenomenon known as twin flames. Okay, so she's got divorce trauma. Got it. Okay. A twin flame is a contemporary person who shares the same soul blueprint with another person who is designed as a perfect romantic partner and compatible match. Throughout her years as a teenager and a young adult, she dated and even fell in love a few times, but she knew something critical was always missing at the core of the relationship. It would always stop growing and healing and going to the next level of development and intimacy, despite her commitment and active growth on her own healing journey. She knew time and time again that the pattern would appear of being given the choice to settle in love or not. She did not believe in a romantic relationship that was devoid of passion, true love, and purpose. In fact, she didn't believe that was a romantic relationship at all. And so out of her awareness and compassion, she would end those soulmate or false twin flame relationships and continue to follow her heart to her true twin flame, which led her to a two year spiritual sojourn in Sedona, Arizona. When she arrived in Sedona, she soon met her spiritual mentor who gave her, which was the nun who died. <laughs> who gave her the critical awareness and keys to unlocking her own innate spiritual healing and powers. Shalea devoted herself in the desert to learning how to heal and love herself and attract her twin flame to her. All of this actualized. When Shalea met Jeff, she knew in her heart and soul that this was her eternal lover and partner. Evidence of this knowing continued to reveal itself and union was no longer a mental concept, but a reality based on her experience of ever-growing love, passion, purpose, and soul level recognition. Shalea, oh, Shalea knew she found one, her one true love like the Disney princesses who had found theirs. She believed, she's probably a Disney adult, that all makes sense now. She believed that if the process she used brought her love and success in the form of her true twin flame, then it can be a reality for all of humanity and not just her or a select elite few. True love is for everybody and this dream is what lies in the deepest heart of humanity, permanent harmonious twin flame union, in an internal sacred embrace between two hearts who beat as one. 
Shalea was inspired to partner with her twin flame, Jeff, <laughs> in sharing the teachings and process that brought them together with the world. Twin Flames Universe was born, and so was the Sacred Church of Union that embodies these teachings, and marries Twin Flames in harmonious union, who live the teachings of Twin Flames Universe. Whew. Wow, what a romance. What a romance. And there you go, folks. That's it. Join today. Donate today. These are some other people involved. This is the one that's in the former military woman who like designed some or helped. I don't know. She's got something with PTSD and she's claiming that they can heal other veterans with PTSD through their methods. And then I don't know who these people are. There you go. If you want your reality improve, improve the reality of others. Jeff and Shalia both said that at the same time um, because they are one person. So they just came to them and they spit it out all at once. So they are both quoted. Um, oh yeah, social impact. This website down. Website down. Uh oh. What is the apocalypse? Oh gosh. 10 signs you're a slave in the Luci Luciferian system. <laughs> but this is quite the, the roller coaster of emotions. Ready, set, raffle. Our first annual Sweet Spring fundraiser is here. Followed by 10 signs you're a slave in the Luciferian system. <laughs> Third one. The karmic wheel of birth and death is killing your joy now. <laughs> okay. Followed by abortion rights are eroding. Suffering is increasing. What now? What is the apocalypse? the next one should be it's our winter raffle it's our it's our annual spaghetti dinner come join us for our spaghetti dinner all proceeds go to the boys and girls club of insanity it's actually our children's uh session it's our it's our sunday school for our little our littles it's called i don't know what it's called Call it something that you should not involve your children in. Oh, okay. Well, we did it. We did it, everybody. More claps needed, please. Yay! Yes. Part three. Oh my gosh. I'm done with them. They they stink. They be stinky, as Jeff said. Um, this book, the episode has been recorded, by the way, of the upcoming podcast where we review self-help books. This is number one. Um, we talked for like five hours about it. So Camellia is currently editing that episode. So Godspeed, uh, let's manifest her having a good time doing this. Um, so she continues to edit the episode because <laughs> that we talked for quite a bit. So I don't think it's going to, it's not obviously going to be that long. It's going to be cut down a lot. Um, so that is coming and we're reading men, why men love bitches, um, is the next one coming up. So, um, we're holding them all until January. So new year, new you self-help skeptics book club coming to a podcast platform near you as well. And, um, it's also gonna be on YouTube too, because I feel like that's where, that's where the homies are. Right. Right. What up, homie? Um, okay, next. So I would like to, we have a couple topics coming up on the channel that I would like to talk about. One being a deep dive into the doctor that was doing biohacking stuff with Jesse Lee. Um, she denounced him before she passed away, before she was, you know, at the, well, she, after she was diagnosed, um, but she named him and uh, showed some, records from her health, you know, journey with him, I'll say. And, uh, I went to his Instagram when we were live during that stream and he's like, got an interesting, uh, social media presence. So I want to do a deep dive on that live. And then also, um, I really want to talk about the, uh, the Lo love has one cult because that documentary was crazy. And I feel like there's a lot to say similar to this, where we can actually go and watch some of the videos live or not. We can watch them live together, but like watch the raw versions of the videos that were featured in the documentary. So I would say if you have HBO and, or if you can, you can buy it, I think per episode, um, in most like smart TVs now, um, if you want to watch the documentary and get a taste of what it's a three, three part series, um, and then watch the stream, that'll probably be the best way to do it. 
just so you have some background and I'll give some background, but it's, it'll be more like, um, eye opening. I think if you watch the documentary first and that again, I'll bring it up. Hold on. Um, love has one. And there's like a lot of twists and turns in that. Um, but beware there's like, there's like, if you have issues seeing like blood and stuff and like gory things, there's a little bit of not blood, but there's some, it's gory. Some of the parts are gory to me. Um, seeing like, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but I guess like as a fair warning, there's like disturbing images seen throughout, um, the whole documentary. Um, and it's called once again, love has won the cult of mother God. This is what it looks like. And that's her before she got, uh, you know, she became a cult leader. Um, but like I said, the, you know, Katie, um, the father God, uh, looks like Tony Robbins. This is also her. And this is what she looked like at the end, towards the end. So, um, that's creepy, right? But it, it talks all about it. She basically, you remember during the pandemic and that one advertisement from like, it was like on a religious channel. I think it was the, okay. And a weird, like life is so small. Like the world is so small. The channel or the, the show that the guy, um, Tammy Faye and her husband, what was his name? He, he has a TV show still. He went to prison for like fraud and then got out, started a TV network, like a Christian TV network, and is now doing that from his, like, like a studio near his home. They were pushing this colloidal silver to people as like a COVID um, remedy to get rid of it or whatever. And they're like, it'll blast out everything. Um, but when people drink it, I guess they can turn blue. And that's what happened to this woman seemingly, um, that she drank so much of it on a daily basis for a long time that she got sick and then turned blue and died. Um, so spoiler alerts, but you find that out pretty quickly. Yeah, and she worked at McDonald's and Robin Williams is involved, not by choice. <laughs> They've involved him, but there's a whole you know, there's lots of video. They live stream like everything of their lives for I think a couple years at least. And there's people who are in the cult that have branched out and are doing their own thing and they're very conspiratorial. So I would like to kind of go through all the, the, the people and, and break it down and kind of kind of talk about this. So that's on my radar. If you have any suggestions also, please let me know in the comments or you can DM me on Instagram. That's where I spend most of my time related to the channel. Um, so I can't, you know, respond necessarily to all of the the DMs because I'm like so busy, you guys. Um, but I try my best to read them all or go back to them when I have free time to take the suggestions. Have I been perfect about that? Absolutely not. <laughs> just FYI, <laughs> just for the record. I have been better <laughs> at other times of responding to messages. Um, but here, I'll show you my Instagram again, in case you've never seen it you don't know what Instagram is. You're so crazy. There I am wearing a Mel Robbins wig. <laughs> There's a little tear tear. Um, yeah, there you go. Follow me, DM me comment, whatever. Uh, that's the best way to reach me. And that's it. I'm going to sing my song. Tara's going to, you know, get some attention because she's below me staring at me. Like, are you done yet? Are you done? Jim Baker. Thank you. Jim Baker. Yeah. It's Jim. It was on Jim Baker show where they were like talking about the silver. Oh yeah. Okay. So this, so the wall street journal article is coming out sometime. I think at the end of November, early December is what the reporter told me. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be mostly about Dave Hollis. And again, I might be just making, blowing this up out of proportion and making it a bigger deal than it actually is. I, I might just be a tiny, tiny part of it. I'm hoping that's the case. Um, but we'll talk about all of the stuff. We'll do a full stream whenever that comes out. And I'm assuming it's going to be in the next few weeks, but I don't think it's going to be this week, but maybe, uh, maybe it's soon. I don't know. Whenever that happens, like probably that day or the next day, I will come live and talk about it and we'll read the article together. Um, and I'll show, like I said, show some DMs and kind of 
kind of go back in time, put some timeline stuff together and, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. I feel like it's going to be okay because I watched the one, I watched the video I did about Dave Hollis after he died, the edited video that I kind of like took some time and thought about it and, you know, was watching how some people were reacting to his death. And I, you know, put the, some people's responses together. And I watched that yesterday and I was like, you know, I really do stand by this. Like I really stand by how I handled it. I stand by not deleting the videos. Um, I stand by that, you know, I, 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 what I said in the video is accurate. I think the amount of videos that I did about them, you know, I could have done less, I think. Um, but it, you know, it was a topic that the audience liked. I liked it. I found it interesting. They always were doing crazy stuff, the whole Hollisville universe. So, you know, looking back at my mistakes, I think, yeah, I could have probably toned it down a little bit. Um, but do I think that I was out of my rights or that I did something so horrible that I should feel, you know, terrible and that I should never post anything on YouTube again? No, I don't. And some people may disagree with that, um, but that's, you know, that's their choice, I suppose. And that's okay, uh, honestly. Like, I'm not gonna think that they're haters. I think that's just someone with a different opinion and that's fine. Um, but yeah, so I just hope that that gets, that gets through the article, is that I don't regret, you know, what I've done and I stand by it. And, um, you know, what happens, what happened to Dave is a tragedy, it is. It's a horrible tragedy. But the only person responsible for that is him, you know, I, especially after the autopsy came out, like when I made the video originally about, you know, kind of talking about his death, the autopsy wasn't out. We thought it was a heart attack. So that was one thing. Now it's even because it was found that he had fentanyl and cocaine in his system. It's even more sort of like, you know, heartbreaking because addiction sucks, but also, you know, I, I can't feel responsible for that. Like I can't. So anyways, I just hope that that comes out of in the article. We'll see. Articles are hard to, you know, get the nuance, but the good thing is we have a platform called YouTube that exists and I can talk it through and talk through all my feelings. And I also feel like, um, you know, I tried to never shy away from changing my opinion. Like, Hey, I, I have screwed up or, you know, I thought that this was right. And I don't think it's right. You know, one thing I've been big on is like, I don't want to delete comments. I don't want to block anybody. Like, I don't think that's right. And then a situation came up where people were DMing me over and over and over again, like upset about a video that I did. And I was like, I can't handle it. <laughs> I, I wish I was stronger and like, could hold people's opinions and like keep opening the DMs every day and just go, okay, no problem. I you know you hate me. You know, I, I love it. It's great, but I don't. So you know, I think I, do, I blocked one person on Instagram and I feel like a hypocrite because I said I would never do that. And here I am blocking somebody, but I just feel like, okay, maybe I've evolved a little bit. Maybe it got to the point where I just needed to, you know, just do that for my own self. And maybe that's like at a certain level when you are, a creator, you get to that point where maybe some of the original thoughts you had about how you're going to handle things, you have to kind of compromise. So anyways, that's a long roundabout way to say, I hope the article is, I think no matter what, I'm sort of selfishly looking at it from like how this is going to make me look angle. And it shouldn't be that, you know, really it's not about me. It's about Dave. Well, the whole article is about Dave, but the article I think is going to be good in the sense of he the reporter talked to a lot of sources um, that were close to Dave, including Heidi. And um, I don't know what she said, but uh, I'm assuming the insight will be new information. So if you're interested in like, you know, kind of behind the scenes stuff we haven't heard about, that will be in the article. Um, so it seems. Anyways, thank you so much. I appreciate you know, my one and only block on Instagram. But I never delete comments on YouTube. I have yet to delete a comment unless it's like a, one of those total scam things that's like, you know, click below. I was inspired and I my mentor is cryptocurrency that I might get rid of. But anything else, let it live on YouTube. It's fine. When it's DM'd to me on Instagram, that's where I'm like, okay, like I'm, you know, I'm trying to open these messages to see what people are saying. And I, you know, the constant like, you know, 
alert, alert, alert. I got to tell you my opinion through your DMs privately. I just don't like that. I'm like, let your comment be out there publicly so others can see it because it doesn't really benefit anyone if you're just privately messaging me. So that's why I sort of had a, uh, a, a negative experience there. So anyways, so if you want to tell me something about myself that you hate, please post it publicly on my YouTube page. <laughs> that way everyone can see and I also don't feel like it's personal harassment. <laughs> Anyways, okay, um, yes. And I'm back on Zoloft, and that's going great so far. <laughs> so there you go. Amen, everybody. Um, we'll be back, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I need to get more music. It's been a little while since I updated. Yeah. Oh, and you might notice that it's gold straight up members as opposed to Pancake Breakfast Club. We're just changing it up a little bit. Trying to not uh, be insensitive. Not that I think this is totally bad, what, you know, having a pancake breakfast club, but just in case, we'll, we'll, we'll update anyways. That was my thoughts there, in case you were wondering. And on we go. Rebecca J. Kelly is an author, sci-fi author. She writes about science and aliens. Casual pasta. Do you like Rasta music? That's from the islands. Rainy Cannon, does it rain on your parade? When you are in Belle Glade, Florida, on vacation? Maybe so. Dee Dee. What about Mimi? Wouldn't that be funny if your name is Dee Dee and your sister was named Mimi and then your other brother was named Wee Wee? That would be so funny, right? Uh-huh. Lillian Massey. You are so classy. And never crassy. And never trashy. But you do take the trash out of your house. Good job. Good work. That's a lot to do. Heather DeMayo. Are you in sales? Cause I got the best product for you. It's called a broom. Cause Mary's gonna sweep it onto you. What onto me? And you're gonna sweep and to me? Yes. It makes sense in my mind And that's all I have time for And Joms Have you ever been to Guam? I've been to many Guams Just kidding But if you go you'll fit right in Lisa B One, two, three We're back to the music -y. We're so lucky. Heather Hope. Do you like Leslie Nope? As a character from Parks and Rec, of course. Maybe we should get on a boat. Host, Keys World, on the sea. That's cool with me, El Cholo's kid. What do you think about this? You'll be like, I'll be a skib. I don't know if a skib's a real person on a boat, but it sounds right. Skipper. That's one. You could be a skipper kid, but not Jenna Cash. Not Jenna Cash, you probably own a boat by now. Not Jenna Cash is flashy on her yacht in the LA sun. Starry nights. You've won the lottery. Your numbers are 
one, two, three. How lucky. Hmm. Lindsay Walden. Taro just crawled into my foot. And I'm petting her and she's laying on a cord. And she likes to meow when she's bored. Carisoto. Photo Toto. Morimoto is a restaurant. I've been there once and it was just okay. Crystal G. I have some energy to put into you because you are a vessel. Crystals. Opals. <laughs> Alaska the Tundra. Have you ever been to just Sedona? I've been once. And I didn't feel that there were vortexes. I just felt like it was a touristy spot with lots of crystal shops. A Consul, have you been there? Did you go hiking or did you just fight a bear? Kimberly Harris Smiles. You can hike for miles in Sedona, Arizona. That is the promise of the wonderful city that we have found located near the Grand Canyon. It will not leave you hanging if you're looking for spiritual enlightenment. Ain't that right, Jorbin? Jorbin's be seeing Orbins. Jorbin saw an orb in Sedona, Arizona, and he found his twin flame. How lame. Nicole Campbell, she wanted to gamble, so she stopped off in Vegas and hit the table, played some poker, and ate some pancakes with the maple. <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> mm, yeah. Candy dragon. I'll put you in a wagon and we'll go around town giving out lollipops to everyone around. Tiffany. Will you join me on this journey? To make the world sweeter and a little bit neater. Chills Marie, pack your shirts, baby, and come with us. It'll be free, except for gas money and a little bit of Burberry outfits needed for this trip. Cheech, we can split it. We'll split it 50-50 And then you can take a hike Nifty Philly turn Texan You're the last one on the list And you're almost Santero's hat Philly turn Texan I've been missing And messing up Every day I have to work and then I push it aside and watch Netflix instead. And Oprah reruns and eat Skittles and watch Zelda on the webcam. Zelda's a manatee. And I actually just made the adoption again for the channel. We adopted a manatee. Renewed that subscription or adoption subscription. But they haven't made a video about Zelda yet. I'm still waiting. So when it comes out, I'll share it. But for now, I'll just wait patiently. That's what manatees do. They're not in the zoo. Sometimes they are, though. All right, everybody. See you next time. Peace. Bye.